Hello. Sorry about the time it took. I was just fixing some macros and stuff because the new update kind of messed with a few things, but all is well. Hello. Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome. My non-spoiler and walker review so far. Bongos. So many bongos. All of the bongos. Many, many bongos. How goes it, everybody? How goes? Hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hi. So there are a few things we need to take care of. I'm gonna wait for more people to hop in. Ooh, there's a new thing on the teleport screen. I want to play, but I need to hold back. I could barely sleep, aw. Did last D&D session get cancelled? Yes, because I was busy with some things and I didn't have enough time to prep for the session, unfortunately. A oh, new etherite. Let's see. Did I miss a crap guide to waiting in queue lobby? Yeah, the queue for me was pretty short, surprisingly. It was about as short as normal. Rag V, welcome. Thank you for the two months. It's only bad last night, I assume so. People wanting to get in like minute one. <clears throat> also, it's early access, so you know, not everybody's gonna have it. Would Joe Crap make an appearance today? Nope. Why is my notification always bugging out? That is strange. It was about 1.7k by the time I hit Q. That's not too bad, actually. That's not as bad as I was anticipating. I was expecting something like 3k Q, but maybe that'll happen Tuesday. Who knows? to wait a one and a half hours, jeez. I know in Omega, it hit 3.9k. A friend of mine got that, yeesh. Then again, I also logged out in an inn. I think that might've helped. I logged I logged out in an, at an inn in Gridania. And my login queue is only about 50. Because that's an instance, you know? But yeah, welcome. We can get to it then. Welcome back. Every, mo things are mostly the same, it seems, for a lot of the jobs. It's not like... Uh, so, if you don't know, some abilities got changed. Uh, and none of them are going to be spoiled, so if you're trying to avoid content spoilers, there's not going to be any here, because none of my jobs are past level 80. Uh, however, if you were here during Stormblood and then go into Shadowbringers, about a quarter of, uh, <laughs> about a quarter of the abilities were, were completely culled and nixed off of the, uh, hotbar. Uh, however, this time, that's because in Shadowbringers, they kind of, like, streamline all the classes to their barest essentials. So, it's it's mostly a lot of it is still there. So, Paladin is mostly the same. Uh, Warrior is mostly the same. Yeah, you can see all the abilities are still there. Uh, Dark Knight, Gunbreakers, all kind of the same. All, I'm going to have to click all of these still, though. Uh... All of the, uh, the like, here's how you play your job sort of thing is going to pop up again, and I'm going to have to. However, one important thing for all you white mages, uh, scholars the same. There it is. Fluid aura. 
It's gone. Finally. This useless skill. See ya. Goodbye. Bye bye, Fluidora. R.I.P. Belts? No, I say they can burn in hell. Goodbye, Belts. You never did anything for us. But yeah. Uh, Bard, I'm pretty sure, is the same. Yeah. A lot of... A lot, the thing is, a lot of the jobs, they didn't get changes, they got additions. So, Machinist, yeah, none, none of these are gone. Most of them, anyway. Dancers, pretty much the same. Oh, Black Mage. Ah, Enochian is gone. You know, Enochian is a trait now. So... Yep. Ooh, that's interesting. This this is different. This thing is different. There are some new things on there. I think? Does that bar look different to anybody else? I don't know. It looks different to me. Maybe maybe it's not. I don't know. God, now I'm like looking for stuff, you know? That's the same? Okay, I thought so. Yeah, that's the astral fire. That's the two polyglots. I mean, I, I use the simplified version all the time. I don't know why I thought it looked different. Yeah, that's the Umbral Hearts at the bottom. Yeah, Enochian is gone because it's a trait now. So we don't have to worry about losing Enochian. So goodbye, Enochian. Uh, summoner, though. All right, let's get ready. Huh? Oh my god, everything's gone! Oh my goodness! Shit, dude. Everything's gone. Jeez! Look at all those. Completely dead. Snapped out of existence. Reduced to atoms. Summoner's a new job entirely. Can't summon Carbuncle anymore? I, I guess it's a new thing. Yeah. I don't even knew- I, I never knew how to play regular Summoner, so this is gonna be pretty interesting. Yeah, it's got a new thing. I'm gonna have to look at that some other time. Uh, Red Mage is the same. Uh, Monk. So I have zero levels in Monk. Dragoon. Ah, Blood of the Dragon. That's a trait as well. Just like Enochian, Blood of the Dragon will now be perpetual. So we don't have to worry about that. Uh, Samurai. Oh. Oh, what is... Wh so I didn't get high enough level in Samurai to... Um, to use these? Interesting. Did they actually put Carby in the blender? That's what it looks like, right? Another prediction made by by me, I guess. Huh, Merciful Eyes. Hisatsu Sagan. Yeah, I don't know what these do. Can only be executed while under the effects of eyes open. Yeah, I don't know when you would use these because I never got high enough level to get to use them. Reaction to third eye. Oh. Gotcha. You get hit, you can use those. Okay. Gotcha. So I guess they probably wanted to reduce the bloat because it's like... I don't know. Like, you have to anticipate an enemy hit, which is, like, not very um, consistent. Okay. Okay. And blue mage got nothing because it's blue mage. Uh, so I have two. I have some already made macros for Reaper and Sage. I'm not gonna pick those up today. Maybe I don't know. Would you guys be interested in seeing those? In the meantime, though, we're gonna get back into New Game Plus. And uh, there's a shoe bill here. Just staring. Just staring. Got my 77 so far already, jeez. But uh, yeah, so we're gonna get back into New Game Plus. I actually never finished talking to the Exarch at the end of Shadowbringers last time, so we're gonna have to do that. Leveling Reaper while avoiding spoilers, oh yeah. Yeah, that's nice that we can just level jobs to avoid spoilers, that's, that's a nice little thing. All right, hello, oh my gosh, there they are. Efren is now their true self. They've been waiting to be a bunny boy for so long, and finally, there they are. 
wonderful as it, as they should be look at them look at him wow <laughs> uh, people are gonna be falling head over heels over all the new emotes Do you manually turn off your chat and animated GIF when a cutscene starts? Uh, I do. See, I have an overlay. Let me close the chat log. Oh yeah, that's right. The maid outfit has now been removed from its gender lock and it is fantastic. But basically, yeah, I have two scenes where I can swap between them to remove the, uh, the chat, basically. Yes. Made boys. <laughs> Hello. Oh, there they go. Fabulous. Anyway, let us go say hi to the Crystal XR. And look, the new the new Etherite. The new Ethernet. You can see you can click on the map now. Look at that. Look at that. Ah, oh, that's so convenient. I'm cishet, but that's really cool that they let you do that. I'm cishet too. Wearing, wearing clothes, clothes have no gender or sexuality. Anyone can wear anything. The main outfit is Mog Station, unfortunately. I knew the Knights Blessed were among the uh, rev revelers, I, but the Crystarium was so crowded I thought it safe to speak my true name. Poor Runa and his ilk were gripping with panic. As you may recall, tis customary not to reveal one's true name outside of family and ceremony. Yet when I hurried to explain that all present were like family, I was greeted with an outpouring of tears and emotional people the Blessed. Aww. Uh, it would seem I don't know my own limits. I had thought to push till dawn, but my body had other plans. Still, I did enjoy the carousing while it lasted. Even I need to forget my cares every now and then. What I don't need is to wake up to Alphano smirking at my bedside. He said my face was a rare sight while I slept. God, I hope I wasn't drooling. <laughs> yeah, so this is after the little celebration that we had last time. It would seem that the city is cel uh, celebrated long in the night. Not that I would know, and embarrassing as it is to admit, I woke to find myself in, in the infirmary, having apparently collapsed from exhaustion. My aching pride was somewhat soothed by the sight of Alizé asleep in the bed next to mine. She must have been just as weary. Long has it been since I've seen her face so peaceful in repose. Aww. Ah, uh, t'was a rare, tranquil mo morning, made unforgettable by the sight of those clear blue skies. Oh. The ending to this tale hath been a joyous one indeed. Myriad were the lessons learned, yet there is one particular import. Tis imperative that I master magics to grant my feet purchase upon the water, or else allow me to part the seas at will. I must needs visit Bismarck in due course, and scrub his teeth in thanks. Mayhap the airy arts of a f fairy whale might be imparted to mortal men. We shall see. <laughs> yeah, at the end, if you didn't notice, at the end of the Shadowbringers credits, towards like when we were swimming on shore, you could see Urianje face down in the sand. <laughs> oh my gosh. People came from Malms around to join the festivities, but most seem uh, to have stumbled home by now. Even so, I dare say Norvrand will echo to the sound of clicking mugs for some while yet. I thought to indulge in a bit of revelry myself last night, until Uranje began to list all the names of my drunken conquests. I ended up drinking water. Water. <laughs> oh, Thancred, your, your bygone days of slain puss have come to an end. Oh, Victor, are you well? No ill after effects. To my eyes, you seem completely healed. It really is a miracle. Speaking of happy surprises, 
I was amazed to see the crowd and greeted uh, had that greeted our return. I hadn't realized just how many people we'd met along the way. And did you see their smiles? Right then and there, I vowed to do whatever I could to keep the joy from fading. Oh, Reen. Pit. Thancred Waters. By your deeds has the blinding light been banished from these skies, and the Sin Eaters driven to retreat. Although our many hurts will be years in the mending, I have faith that this world and her people will one day be whole once more. With no rejoining in prospect, the Source need no longer fear the coming of an eighth umbral calamity. Nice. Oh yeah, that was the reason why we came here. <laughs> Kind of got caught up in saving the world, but I forgot we were also saving the other. And with that triumph, the future from which you came will no longer come to pass. Yet here you still stand. Oh yeah, paradox. Um, about that. Uh. So I do. I wonder if that other age continues onward somehow, cut adrift from time's flow. Or have I simply etched myself a place upon this new block of history? Yeah, how does how does that work? Either that was one way, thing that I never realized. This is an unexpected development. As the summoner of your souls, my death was meant to release you back to your world. Yeah, I think multi-world is the only explanation, but yeah. Read the lodestone side story to find out. Yeah, I, I'm just going to chalk it up to don't think about it, because this whole nonsense is not going to make any sense. Yeah. Yet I am very much alive. Any time travel stuff is going to be murky. In the first. I believe I speak for us all when I say that we are happy to postpone our return if it means your life is spared. We will seek out another way. Besides, I never had any intention of rushing home. There are people here I still need to thank, and this means I might actually have time to do so. Hmm. Tying up loose Yet ends. we dare not neglect our comrades in the source. That's right, we still need to find a way to get home. Mistress Tataru, to name but one, will be most anxious to know how things stand with us. So, you'll just have to make the journey alone for the moment. Be sure and give a full report to our fellow scions, will you? Oh, and we'd also appreciate any news you can bring us from back home. Yeah, see if we won the war yet. Then I see no reason to delay. I can open the path from here. I imagine we each have matters demanding our attention, so let this be a farewell for us all. No. Send word when you've resummoned our friend. Oh, and do try to ensure he arrives within the city next time. <laughs> <laughs> of course. I shall strive for utmost accuracy. No strange forests or unplanned passengers, I promise. <laughs> I'm sure he's gotten better at it. Yeah, canonically, we have not returned to the source this entire time. He did used to be an archer, didn't he? I'm a little relieved, to be honest. I would have been terribly lonely if everyone had suddenly disappeared. Aww. But I understand that you have to go. Safe journey, warrior of darkness. I hope to see you again soon my child just a moment while I attune the portal 
then you can be on your way. When I was a boy, many long years ago, I yearned to stand tall as the heroes of Eld. But like a fool seeking to pluck the stars from the heavens, my every attempt to reprise their deeds fell short. And then one day, an all but forgotten dream from my youth stood before me in the flesh. A hero who looked at the horizon and beyond and saw I knew not what. All I knew was that I would give anything to stand at that hero's side. Would that it was so easy. The glory of the heavens was ever beyond the grasp of those who never thought to reach for it. But if I have gained anything from all of this, it is the courage to stretch out my hand. Do you hear me, Grahatia? This is no time for sleeping. Arkov, thank you for the raid. Hey, man. Hello, everybody. I assume everybody who has joined in has already been caught up on the story. Otherwise, there's plenty of spoilers here. Meanwhile, in the Imperial Palace in the Source. things going on here to the west gate i want to know what's happening there same as the others struck down with a single blow an unfortunate day to draw guard duty <laughs> he was only two days away from retirement Forgive me. These were your people. We took advantage of this slaughter to slip into the palace. It is not for me to grieve them. Hmm. God, guy is so badass. That was the Emperor. Wait! Oh. Oh, just like that, huh? Gaius, you've missed your part in this, I'm afraid. I'm guessing that's not a litibus. Identify yourself, demon! You were hoping for the Asian? The Craven shed this skin and fled rather than face me. A pity. I was looking forward to crossing blades with myself. Mm. But I cannot deny the feeling of satisfaction. 
body and soul reunited at last. What now? The game continues, but the pieces have changed. Only if we trust in a paragon's words. A mistake I do not intend to repeat. Elidibus is gone. Tore a hole into the rift. Now, what would Elidibus have to fear from a Garlean with the Echo? That's my question. <gasps> Xenos, my foolish, greedy son. Was a second life not enough? Was the Empire too rich a prize to ignore? True freedom for our nation, our people, will never be won by a spoiled princeling. The burden of this throne is beyond you. Hmm. Tis you, father, who have struggled with this burden. Simply holding the Empire together has occupied your limited faculties. But you may take comfort in knowing that I have no intention of pursuing your tedious agenda. Nor am I interested in ruling over the Empire's lands. I came only to remove that which ruins my sport. I will not have my prey stolen by your petty wars and cowardly weapons. You would kill me just for that. I need no other reason. Any and all who interfere with my hunt... ...will not do so twice! I heard the Asians speak of Zodiac, an island. Even the will of this star is but a construct of our own making. We shall gorge upon their strength, and then, my friend, our contest shall begin anew. He's lost his nut! Zeno! Oh. Gaius versus Xenos. I would love to see that fight. Oh, hey, we're back. We're back here. Remember this? Hello. Oh, you've returned. Was there a lull in the fighting over there, or? Hmm. I've been keeping the device you uncovered. Okay, no. <laughs> Back to the Rising Stones. Hopefully it's not crowded. Gaius Van Badass, right? Oh, surprisingly not. Look at that. Oh. So yeah, that was one thing that, uh was a little disappointing to me personally because I was really looking forward to fighting Varus myself. But luckily there is a way to quote unquote fight him. But uh, that is a big subversion that Varus is not going to be the big bad. Still don't know how I feel about Xenos though. Uh, but, 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 uh, Victor, is it really you? Uh, but, but, how? When? Uh, we didn't think you'd be back for ages. Uh. 
<laughs> Would you rather I win again? Oh, don't be daft! I just can't believe you're actually back! We heard the good news from your pixie friend, but nothing compares to seeing you in the flesh. As for the situation on this side, the Imperials are still eyeing our forces from afar. What I'm told, the Garlean armies have been slow to react and seem reluctant to commit to any large-scale engagements. It's an odd sort of stalemate. Otherwise, we've yet to see any sign of that awful Black Rose weapon we were warned about. Oh, but I suppose we did call in an old friend to help out on that count. <laughs> Kryl and I had a terrible time tracking him down, though. Though it will be worth, <laughs> though it will be worth it to see the look on your face when you find out who it is. <laughs> anyway, I was just about to make contact with our, this helper of ours, and then confirm the latest news from the front. Might you fancy having a rest while I do? Ah, the warrior of light, back where he belongs, just as if nothing had happened. Though you do seem different somehow. You'll have to tell me all about your adventures when we have a spare moment. Until then, welcome back. Well, I'm not wearing my white and red anymore. I'm wearing black and black. All right, and that's the official end to Shadowbringers. The proper end. At least for 5.0. Not end end. Ah, here we go. Hey, look, it's Endwalker. We're on the moon. Oblivion has claimed him. Emmet Selk gone. La Habrea gone. I alone remain, the last of the unbroken. Once more, I move to reevaluate the potential of these tattered souls. Ah, Xenos. Never did I dream you would overpower me so completely. Possessed as I was of your body and all its uncanny strength. And now I have shared with you the truth of this world and its reflections. Who can predict how events will unfold? Not I. Emissary, what a poor jest that title has become. The flow of history has become muddied. Its currents wild beyond my capacity to direct them. You have wrested the advantage, Heidelin. The thieving hands of your disciples tighten their grip on our star. The origins of the world remain hidden, and its inhabitants ignorant of their broken existence, just as you and your creators desire. They celebrated the gift of imperfect life, uncaring, unknowing as we weaken and fade. But do not imagine yourself rid of us. Though your champion has indeed proven the most egregious obstacle to our ascendance, a barbed thorn in my side, he may yet be removed and cast into the abyss. Oh yes, it can be done. I will keep these heroes mired in the first, and victory will be ours at last. Warriors of darkness now, are they? And their fate is decided. They shall meet the same end as those who came before. Death at the hands of the warrior of light. Now he really is all on its own. He's by himself. He's the last Asian. Ooh. Oh yeah, and this sets up the raid, the raid series. Oh, the raid series is so good. Unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to show it to you guys, but this is a really nice raid. I love the story of this raid. It seems you were right. 
Yes, there is something out there. But it would mean crossing moms and moms of this infernal emptiness, which is rather unhealthy for living creatures, as I understand it. Even were we to restrict ourselves to brief forays, I don't like to imagine the effect it would have on our ether. But you still want to go, don't you? We may have saved the world, but we haven't reclaimed it. Ah, when you put it that way. What choice do we have? I'm going with you. That's what family's for, isn't it? Oh, Dad Cred! Come, let's head back and prepare for this mad journey of yours. Thank you, Thancred. Yep, so that is the empty white nothingness that has been plaguing the first, essentially. That is the rest of the first's world. Through blazing skies give way to gentle night. What hand can end the world of dark and light? The war of dark and light. All right, so I'm going here because there's spoilers in this room. Do, 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 do. All right, Shadowbringers Part 2 is over. And now we begin Shadowbringers Part 3. Shoop. Deep within the city. Oh, okay, yeah. That might be spoilers. All right, and we get back to it. Hello, Tataru. Victor! Gods, it's good to see you again. I hope your being here means you've had your fill of rest. <laughs> More than my fill. Well, you certainly earned it. Uh, I have only played the game on and off for a few hours, so I only know the character through TJ's voice. Oh, are you talking about Thancred? This is like hundreds of hours um, in the future, so you're in the spoiler zone. Yeah, so many spoiler zone, yeah. Not much has happened since your last visit. I had planned for you to meet uh, that helper I told you about, but he refused to answer his link pearl. I do hope he's all right. We've been exchanging messages with the Aeorzean Alliance through, uh, throughout, though. They say the fighting has finally stopped at Grimlit Dark, and the Empire has shown no sign of movement. Which means we might actually have a moment to ourselves for a change. Seeing your back, might you tell me more about your time in the first? Great! Oh, and if you don't mind, I'd like to ask Flamen to join us. She'll want to know what happened to Minfilia, and I think it best she hears it from you. We'll meet you at the terrace at the House of Splendors. Ooh. Oh, I actually never did this quest. Wait a minute. There's a special side quest that I never did. Ooh, say why he? Thank you for the five gifts and subs. The roll quest. Well, the roll quest, and also there's a special quest for. Uh, F Flamine, when you finish Shadowbringers, pretty sure that I never did. I don't know if I'll do that today or some other time. Victor, my, it has been too long. Tataru did mention that I would be joining you, did she not? Thank you. Words cannot well express how I have l longed to know more of the first. This world, Minfilia, has sacrificed so much to save. But come, rest your feet. 
Tataru should be arriving shortly. And so Minfilia chose to pass on her gift to the next oracle, this girl who Thancred named Reem. To have such a burden thrust upon her as a child, only to embrace it when given the choice. Where's session 18 of Necrohunt? Well, if you've been following my social media, you notice that, uh, you'll realize that I sent a message that it was cancelled, because I wasn't prepared and I had too many things on my plate. Session uh, 18 will be happening this coming Wednesday. In that respect, they are quite alike. It would seem her legacy is indeed incapable of hands. Victor, might I ask a favor of you when you next return to the first, to tell Reen what I cannot. To tell her thank you. And I would offer thanks to you as well, for staying with her at the end. I beg your pardon, but could I have a word? Who is this? <gasps> hey, it's real! My boy! Real! I do hope you're here to tell me you've received a word from our helper. I wish, nay, I've not had a peep out of him. And it's been a good long while now, too bloody long. On account of which, I've been going to sneak over to, uh, over the border and see if I can't get a signal for him, uh, to him from up, cl uh, from closer up. But what if they catch you? There must be another way. Well, if it ain't as, uh, ain't as if we asked Thancred to do it. Besides, I shouldn't have no trouble peeking, uh, peeking my way through Gimlet now that the fighting's died down. Gods know there's enough shadows to hide in. And it beats waiting around here, twiddling me thumbs. Any road, I just thought I'd let you know. Now, I'd best be... Uh, I nearly forgot. Uh, Kryle at the stones, and uh, Kryle's at the stones, and she wants a word. Something to do with the patients. She was getting ready to examine them again when I left. Mm. We'd best head back, then. I'm sure it's important. Mm. Rocker Hulan, thank you for the bits. If every cutscene isn't followed with you completely surrounded by bunny boys, I'll be very disappointed. Okay, so I think... Oh, hey, Zeke. Hey, Zeke, what's up? I think I want to do... This, uh, this side quest. There's a side quest here. If I suspend New Game Plus real quick... Is this to be done after 5.3, or is it can can it be done now? What do you guys think? Wait, okay, wait until 5.3 then. Would you say after 5.3? All right, all right, all right. Sounds good. Yeah, apparently this is an important quest to give some uh, some nice conclusion on uh, the Minfilia stuff. Did I name him after Victor, aka Rat? Yes, I did, actually. I did. Back into the Rising Stones we go. But uh, this is a good time that I can do the, um, the final roll quest, right? In... Uh, in the Crystarium. It seems she's still examining them. Oh, I do hope it's nothing bad. You're here. Good. Hello, Kryl. <clears throat> so, how are they? 
still locked in slumber, but otherwise in good physical health. For the present, at least. Hmm. For the present? Oh no, is something wrong with them? I'm afraid there may be. Uh -oh. I summoned you after detecting faint signs of instability in Thancred's corporeal ether. But subsequent examinations suggested all five might be affected. And when I examined them just now, my fears were confirmed. Tellingly, the degree of instability varies between them. Thancred exhibits the most notable signs, followed by Yushtola and Urianger. The twins' ether, meanwhile, remains relatively stable, but there is a change there too if one knows to look for it. Mm, that was the order that they were summoned. Hold on. Isn't that the order they were called away in? Yeah, see? Indeed. Which leads me to believe the instability will only increase with time. Though I can but speculate... I fear this may be a symptom of a weakening link between body and soul. That sounds bad. By the gods! What happens if the link is broken? I cannot say for certain. This is all unknown territory to us. Yet whatever happens, it cannot be good. <laughs> the scions have phlegma. Uh. Mercifully, the instability is still only slight. And you may rest assured, Master Matoya and I will do everything in our power to keep it from worsening. Be that as it may, it is imperative that you find a way to restore our friends' souls to their bodies. Hmm. No rest for the right to say. I realize you've only just returned from saving two worlds. But time is not on our side. But where's he even supposed to start? We had the greatest minds in the realm hunting high and low for an answer, and they ran out of places to look. Then we'll have to check a different realm then. You stated in your report that the Exarch had originally intended to reverse the summoning process by means of his own death, correct? He did. Raha always was a reckless young fool, ready to die for the first righteous cause that came along. Oh, you knew him. His plan might well have worked, but I for one am glad he never had the opportunity to see it through. Even if it does mean our friends must remain stranded a while longer. There is another way, I am sure of it. And the key lies with him, with the Exarch. Pray return to the first and apprise him and the others of the situation. That's we not fucking good. We will do what we can from here, and if the fates are kind, we will have good news to share upon your there return. There are both parts of the children of Baldassian. That is true. They went to the same college. All right, back to the first. Oh yeah, Etherite tickets. I loaded up on on Etherite tickets because uh so you remember you know how there's a cap on uh, on cost when you teleport to far off places. Was Graha Baldessian? Yeah, it, when he first introduced himself, he said uh, he's a student of Baldessian. So here the cap is uh gone now. Uh so if I check, I think far east. Okay, no, it's it's not too bad. Price has been reduced. But, uh, yeah, basically, the cap of 1,000 gil for teleporting is now gone. Luckily, none of these are 1,000 just yet, but it will be. It's like 1,400 gil from Kugane to Limza, jeez. Hello, Graha. 
Ah, Victor, you are returned. I'd hope your time in the source was suitably restful. Uh, but of course it wasn't. Go on. So the signs are dying. The corporeal ether shows signs of instability. By the gods, the possibility never even occurred to me. If you have returned in the hopes that my research has yielded a solution, I fear you will sorely be disappointed. Tis but a mercy that we have the likes of Mistress Kryle and Master Matoya to keep our friends' bodies safe while we wrestle with the problem. But they cannot forestall the separation of body and soul indefinitely. Come, the others must be told. Cyrus Bane, thank you for the read. Welcome, everybody. Shadowbringer spoilers. Spoilers everywhere. Spoilers all over the place. Post Shadowbringers. All of this is post Shadowbringers. Pray excuse my late arrival. Will Thancred and Reen not be joining us? Nay, my lady. With apologies to all, they beg leave to pursue their investigation of the Empty to its conclusion. Should matters here demand their presence, however, they did assure me that they would make themselves available. Yep, they're busy with the raid series. Uh, which job are you going to use an Endwalker Paladin? Yes, of course. Then let us proceed. Most of my gang are caught up, no worries. Awesome. I, I think it best that you begin by providing a summary of Mistress Kryle's findings. Yeah, so you guys' souls are kind of starting to get separated from your bodies, and so we're going to need to figure out what to do. I suppose it was only to be expected that some change would occur. Yet our souls seem unaffected, to my eye at least. How long they will remain so is another question. Kryl is right. It is imperative we find a way to return to the Source. Perhaps an explanation of the method by which I brought you here will yield some inspiration. Ere I begin, it must be noted that I am by no means a gifted mage. Oh. In order to employ powerful magics, I must rely upon the crystal tower and its boundless reservoirs of energy. Excuse me? I am by no means a gifted mage. Teleports the entire crystal tower into another dimension a hundred years in the past. Okay. Your, magic your modesty, you was no exception. Graha. It is a singular spell adapted through painstaking effort from the technique that transported me to the first. To use an analogy, it works by cutting a hole in the fabric of reality, a hole tailored to the object of summoning through which it and it alone may pass unscathed. Though I succeeded in creating said hole, I failed to latch onto my intended target. Instead of you, the spell found those close to you, and ended up summoning them in their incomplete state. You know, for a former archer, your aim is pretty off. I would not soon throw my life away, not after the lengths you and yours went to save it. Aww. And so long as I breathe, I will spare no effort to see you safely home. But should all else fail, and your lives be at stake, there remains one sure method. Stop being so overly dramatic, Graha. <laughs> what was that for? How can you even entertain such thoughts? You owe your life to the Warrior of Light, and you don't get to die unless he says so. <laughs> oh, I love Alizé. Your followers await your divine judgment. Oh, what did you just... <laughs> <laughs> 
If the two of you have finished, perhaps we could return to our discussion? Rather than dwelling upon the multiple failed attempts at transference, I think it would behoove us to focus on the solitary success. I would draw your attention to the fact that our friend can travel between worlds possessed not only of his body and soul, but his personal effects besides. This is no different from the teleportation magics to which we are all accustomed. Magics that allow for the transportation of those inanimate objects one considers to be an extension of oneself. That is true. Whenever we attune to an ether, right? Uh, an, yeah, whenever we attune to an etherite and teleport between them, we are able to bring our belongings with us. Are you suggesting that simply by considering us his possessions, he could carry our souls back to the source upon his person? That's going to be a little bit difficult. Well, it would be nice if things were that simple for a change. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about objectifying my friends. But vague notions of ownership seem a rather tenuous thing to stake our lives on. So much as a moment of doubt on his part and we'd be left floating in the rift. Milady hath the right of it. The requisite fixity of belief would be too much to ask even of our friend. Yet, were we to immure our souls within an object in his possession, mayhap then our safe passage could be assured. White orosite would, I believe, serve as a suitable vessel for this purpose. It was conceived to imprison the massy soul of an Asian and should house one of ours with relative ease. That is true. It is good at massing lots of ether, but how do you make it so that it's not decaying over time? Isn't white orosite like we learn that white orosite can temporarily hold all that ether not for long we would need only to ensure our soul's safe preservation inside the stone and identify a means by which they might be transferred back onto our vacant bodies and make sure that it lasts longer than a microwave dinner soul preservation and transference hmm. I believe I know of someone who may be able to assist us. Hmm. Only needs On to hold just as source, long as we teleport. That's there stands true. a great palace built by the elves. It was forsaken in the wake of the flood, but a certain new mo chose to make their home there soon after. Hmm. Though they have long lived as a recluse, they once occupied a place of honor in Verbert's royal court, and it is said that none in all of Norvrand is more knowledgeable than they on matters of the soul. Well, I've no objection to seeking a helping hand, but if they've gone to such lengths to hide themselves away from the world, what makes you think they'd be willing to lend us one? <laughs> a worthy question. Years ago, I myself tried and failed to solicit their cooperation in the battle against the Sin Eaters. No sooner had I begun to make my plea then they unleashed a swarm of their familiars upon me. Unlike me, however, you have curried favor with the Fae Folk. By that merit alone, I am hopeful that they would grant you an audience. That is true. We scratched their back once. They may still be inclined to turn you away, of course, but if their knowledge might feasibly facilitate your return home, we have to try. We are also the king's sapling, that is true. All we have to do, hey, yeah, what if, why don't we just get Titania to do it? It's like, hey, Titania, uh, we need this one Numo's help and they're not lending it to us. Oh, no worries, sapling. Oi! <laughs> Shouts. The Grand Cosmos, that is, the palace we seek, stands on the opposite shore of the source. I will arrange for a boat to carry us there. Whilst thou journeyest thither, I think it best that I devote mine energies to the creation of white orosite. By thy leave, of course. The process requireth no small amount of time, and should be should the Numo consent to lend us their aid, we will have need of a suitable vessel ere long. Agreed. Then I would ask the rest of you to meet me in Sullen. Oi! What are you bullying my sapling? <laughs> what are you doing in Ill Meg? 
One second, I'm gonna go turn on the fan. Oh no, don't use that. Oh, that's gonna be, it's gonna be a hard habit to break. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That's Echo in the background, by the way. Say hi, Echo. Hello. Hi, chat. <laughs> chat says hi. I could finally catch you live. Welcome. Welcome to the stream. Although this is massive spoilers, so if you're not caught up on Shadowbringers, I would be wary. Uh, did you know you can set Etherite tickets to be used automatically over a set gill threshold? Can you? How? How do I do that? Teleport menu? Cogwheel. Oh! Uh, confirm for all costs above a gill allowance. 1,000. Wow, that's convenient. So that message will only pop up if I have to teleport somewhere that costs 1,000 or more now, right? Nice. That is cool. Hey, Zeke. As I told you before, I had scarcely set foot on the palace grounds when I was set upon by host, the host's familiars, and I expect our reception today will be no different, which is why I propose we march through the main gate, weapons drawn. I'm sorry, but were we not here to petition for assistance? You can't possibly be barging in through looking for a fight. Uh, it's going to persuade them. Actually, I believe the Exarch may have the right of it. They have no doubt procured a great deal of time and energy into this creation. Were I them, I would be most interested to meet those who, would, uh, who could overcome my defenses. As would any true seeker of knowledge, and there is little we can say or do to convince them to help us if we know nothing of their character, nor less why they choose to hide themselves from the world. But if we can seize their interest, mayhap we can earn ourselves an audience. Alright, fight our way through. Weapons drawn it is, then. Though I must say, Exar, you certainly seem to be overjoyed, uh, enjoying all of this. <laughs> uh, do I? Oh, well, I will not deny that I enjoy the thought of fighting alongside you all, rather than pacing out, uh, about inside the Crystal Tower. Aww, we finally get to go on a little more adventures with him. You both seem to be in rather high spirits, if you ask me. Not that I'm surprised. Your moods invariably improve when Victor is around. Ah, uh, the two crushes. Uh, what exactly are you implying? Uh, he averted a calamity, and the light which seemed destined to consume him has been extinguished. Tis only natural that we are pleased to see him. <laughs> yes, well, you will have plenty of time to celebrate his good health after we are finished here. Uh, of course. Then let us proceed to the palace. They both admire you so much. They're both in love with you. All right, Zeke, since you are the only one here, I'll invite you to the party. So here's a dungeon time. All right. For the rest of you in the chat, I'm going to do a party finder for anybody who wishes to join us. Uh, recruit members. I 
dungeon. The Grand Cosmos. I think that's what it is, right? Yeah. Dude, completion. Here we go. Oh, hey, Reaper! Yeah! Are you gonna go in as a Reaper? Oh, you can't. Okay. Can't go in as a Reaper. Hold on, let me fix that. Because you're level 70. I mean, that's fine. Yeah. You're, you're gonna go in as Bard. You're in such devastation! Okay. Alright, we've got a... A spot for a healer. If anybody is a healer who wishes to join, it is in the party finder. You should be able to see the Grand Cosmos right there. We have a spot for a healer. I'm glad I can have a Final Fantasy XIV in the background on Endwalker Day without worrying about spoilers. Thanks. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I expect the viewership is going to be lower today since people are trying to avoid spoilers, but yeah. How's Final Fantasy XIV going pretty well so far? Oh, uh, Will William says they can switch to a healer if somebody wants to join in as a DPS. Oh, there we go. Urk. All right. Awesome. We good? Yeah, Crypt Lurker gear is great. Here we go. The Grand Cosmos. Oh, wait. I think I need, uh, yeah, turn those off. Yeah, I remember it again. There seems to be a trend of Twitch raids spoiling people. Hmm. Okay. Should I put it in emote only mode? Or follower only? Actually, I'm going to put it in follower only chat and put it like 10 minutes. Hello. All right, I'm gonna put it in follower only chat. Uh, and I'm gonna set it that you have to be a follower for at least one day. So sorry if anybody had just followed today, it is so that I do not get spoilered uh, because I don't think anybody would, you know, come like that's a lot to commit you know one day for someone who wishes to spoil so apologies to anybody who just followed today but you know it is for the safety of me and everybody else in the chat and here we go Shoot. come on big pulls big pulls oh it's new uh new astro now yeah so, time for new Astro. Oops, sorry, let me grab that. That. This is the, uh, this is the Lakeland theme. It's remixed. Da, 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 da. I like that they remix the all the themes. That's really fun. So can you, you man of men? Yeah, I so salted earth. I don't have to target it anymore. I was like waiting. I was like, where's the target? But I don't need to target salted earth anymore. That's a nice little quality of life. It just places it where you are. You get all those. Oh my god, is that is that Earthly Star? Is that the new size of Earthly Star? Excuse me? That's massive! Wait a minute, what the fuck? Holy shit! It's so big! Jesus! 
Jesus. What the hell, dude? 20 yawns? Jeez. Like, before it was like the size of a sanctuary. It also got a power boost. Wow, awesome. Now people, hopefully people stand in it from now on. Oh, what am I saying? No one, no one's gonna stand in it. The sound effects are low. So, yeah. All right. Yeah. Shadow Bolt. Come on, Frey. Let's do the thing. Oh, yeah. So, here's the thing, right? Delirium and, uh... And, like... I think it's called Inner Release. Uh, Warrior. It has charges now. It doesn't have a duration anymore. It has charges. So, uh, you will always get three Deliriums, or three, uh, whatevers, Blood Splitters from Delirium now. Yeah, combos aren't interrupted as well. Oh yeah! Look, look, look! Okay, I'm gonna show it. I'm gonna show it. Why? I'm gonna do a one, and I'm gonna... I can, I can, I can unmend and my combo doesn't break. Look. Wow. <laughs> Jesus, that is the entire arena. Look at that. Yeah, you can charge for free as a warrior. You don't have to use your beast gauge anymore. much more manageable yeah just like all around quality of life for the melees and the tanks really go that nice I think they I think they must have quieted the sound effects because although I personally turn them down, they're very quiet right now. I think they turned them down, realizing they were pretty loud. Party, yeah. Come here. There we go. <gasps> like, look, look, my, my thing, I can... I can throw on mend and my stalwart soul is still ready. Oh, it feels so good. Oh, abyssal drain and carve carve and spit uh, share a cooldown now. Okay. So this is like the AOE OGCD and this is the single target OGCD. Okay. Alright, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. That's a subtle little change. Does this mean that Delirium is a pre-pull ability now? Yeah, I guess it can be. Yeah, it is. I guess so. You use it immediately since you have charges instead of duration. And Abyssal Drain got even less use? I wouldn't say so. You know. It is a it is a heal utility now. You know, there there is reason to use a Abyssal Drain 
as opposed to carve and spit. You know, if you need health, for example. It is a mitigation tool. They both replenish MP. Yeah, but Abyssal Drain Works restores HP. Whereas Carbon Spit doesn't. That was always the, the reason why there were two different abilities. And also it's ranged, you know? Watch, despite the size of Earthly Star, some people are gonna somehow find a way to still not be in the circle. You know it. Black mages. Okay, yeah, for single target, for single target, you carve and spit. And for, uh... Oh, jeez, I forgot about this dungeon. For mob pulls, you want to do... Abyssal Drain. like them sharing a cooldown. It makes makes Dark Knight ever slightly more manageable because I would always like forget one or the other because there's so many other like damage buttons that Dark Knight needs to remember to press. Delirium is lower. Oh. I, yeah, I think it is. It's back up. Yeah, 60 seconds. So they changed everything to be like within the 60 second, 90 second. Like, it's basically in uh, multiples of 30 now, as opposed to the weirdness it was. Because you would have one that's like 100 seconds or like 45, stuff like that. So now it's like multiples of 30. Just so everything lines up nicer. Hello, Dargan. God, that massive earthly star must feel so nice. sound is new. You didn't used to have a proc sound whenever your, uh, your The Blackest Knight would go off. Like, that, you know. That's definitely new. I like these small, subtle quality of life changes. It's very nice. I miss Stormblood days when you could wall, uh, could wall-to-wall -wall pulls with Dark Knight and using a combo of Blood Price, The Blackest Knight, and Altering Quietus and Abyssal Drain. That's a lot of words that I don't know what they mean. <laughs> but I'm sure it sounds cool. Let's bring you over here. Alright, kill the healer first. Go. And that. 
Send this, and that, and this. Wish this was a place you could do RP. Me too. There just needs to be like a castle place for uh, for people to RP in. Especially this upcoming segment. outside Titania's castle. That's true. That is true. But what about inside a castle? You know, where do I go for the inside? You know, where can I where can I RP where there's a nice dancing ballroom like this? Look at this! This is I want an RP room like this. This is what I want. Hello. You have sullied these halls long enough. Come, Lungus, L Lugus, our guests yet one for company. Insatiable flame, Lugus. Ifrit? I don't know. I don't know that this is uh, an Ifrit equivalent. Luigi? <laughs> all right, here we go. I like this boss. So basically all you gotta worry about is uh, keep the furniture for fire uh, for when you're on fire, but don't let him catch those things on fire. is going to do fire as well. Remember not to not to put fire on the furniture. Oh, Zeke, you're going to burn the curtains. Oh, no. That's okay. We've still got other, other pieces of furniture. Oh, rip, Zeke. Oh. <laughs> F. It's okay. Burn the piano, we're gonna have to. I'm gonna I call dips on the piano. Ooh, not right now though. Oh, don't burn the piano, please! No! I burned the piano when I didn't mean to. Okay, it's okay, there's still sofas. There's still a bunch of sofas. Eh. Scorch. 
Switching left. Car is domain. Don't burn the furniture. God, it feels so good to be able to do a ranged attack and continue your combo. Look, watch, my combo's still going. See? Goosh. Oh, that's so nice. I gotta remember to do that, because my muscle memory is trained to stop my combo. It's scorching left. There you go. Fire's the main. I'm number two. Hey, there we go. The work sets make for good glams. Yeah. Could make a nice kindred from League glam. Oh my god, it's a party full of cat boys. <laughs> All four of us are Catboys, Catboy Squad. Hell yeah, these are the these are the last four remaining Catboys after everybody turned into a bunny. There's only four of us left in the entire realm. <laughs> Survivors of the bunny apocalypse. God, that is an insane. I still can't get over that new Earthly Star range. That is freaking massive. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, guys. Ooh, pants. Have some of those. That was my fiercest familiar. Oh, impressive. Dog! Hey Cloak, it is good to see you again after all these years. And judging by your vigorous greeting, I dare say the feeling is mutual. To be sure, a simple shake of the hand would have sufficed by way of welcome, but I shan't complain. Ah, uh, hey. But you must be wondering as to the purpose of our visit. We come to beg your assistance in a most urgent <laughs> matter. Shake? Beg? Our comrades' very souls are in danger. If we are to save them, we will need the benefit of your unsurpassed knowledge on the matter. Please, will you not sit and hear our plea? <laughs> oh, how dare you! How dare you speak thus in my presence! The words of power. <gasps> Glitter Apple, thank you for gifting five subs. Hi, thank you. Very it generous. It was to escape such words of temptation that I hid myself from the world of men. <laughs> Well, nah, we are not wont to paw at the words of power. You are sinners, one and all, and I swore never again to have any part in your affairs. I can only imagine what terrible events forced you into a life of seclusion. But I think your presence in our uh, predicament might very well be a good treat. But I know that the new Mo are a good and noble folk. It is not in your nature to turn a blind eye to the plight of those around you. And in treating with us, I am certain whatever mistrust you feel for man will begin to heal. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Alphado.
If you will not be satisfied, oh, I oh, suppose I could listen. After all, there's no harm in just... No, 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 I mustn't. Not again. That damn court mage seemed to have the best of intentions too, and countless innocents died for my naivety. Oh, that's right, yeah, the evil guy in Brandon's backstory. Oh, you know not what you ask of me. What horrors my knowledge has wrought. Hmm. You mean the magical plague of Verbert? <gasps> you know of the plague? Then you know how dangerous Soulcraft can be. Instead of saving your friends, you risk damning them. Are you sure you're willing to take that chance? I don't think we have a choice. Oh. No. Oh. Oh, very well. I will hear your petition, but that is all. And I expect fitting payment for my troubles. Commensurate with your contribution to our cause. No more and no less, I promise you. With that settled, might I impose upon you to join us at the Crystarium? I'm afraid the nature of my friend's predicament calls for absolute secrecy. Yes, and we'll have no pettiness. Anyway, <laughs> there you are. The others have gone to the Crystal Tower. Uh, we should hurry. All right. Come on, chat. Whenever there's a pun going on, I can't help but scratch the itch. <laughs> we mustn't dally here any longer. All right. I've learned a lot in my time being a dad in the... Uh, in the magical DPS role quests. Oh yeah, thank you. Thank you for the run. All right, let's see. Pen, no, Dossel Gates, yes. Why must you harm us so? <laughs> If you expect me to simply roll over and stop my puns, then I'm afraid I must refuse. Oh, chat's angry at me. I guess I went barking up the wrong tree. <laughs> anyway, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm out. I'm done. I'm done. I'm sorry. You mean to tell me not only that the return of night was your doing, but that you hail from another world as well? Yeah. Everything we told you of the source, the shards, the seven umbral calamities, all of it is true. I realize how fantastical it sounds, and I would not blame you for doubting our testimony. But given your expertise, you must surely have noted the peculiar nature of their souls. Any other time and I would have dismissed your stories as balderdash and flummery. 
But upon closer inspection, tis plain their souls are far denser than is normal, and that they do not possess true bodies. Hmm. Save you. Your body is your own, and your soul is the densest of them all. Hey, listen, I only had a few burgers, okay? So I put on a little weight. As I said before, were it not for their heroism, the skies over Norvrant would still be awash with light, the realm yet at the mercy of 4-3 and the Sin Eaters. <laughs> Thick soul. <laughs> After all they have done for our home, seeing them safely back to their own, it seems the very least we can do. tale is intriguing. Yes, very intriguing indeed. Simply to hear it is fitting payment in itself. Your body is carrying two souls, As that's true. As your friends, I can but agree. Their valorous deeds on behalf of Norvrant are deserving of recognition. Of their own fitting payment. Yeah, we saved the world. Then. I will. I would see my knowledge put to good use for a change. I do have one condition, however. I am not the spry young Numo I once was. As such, I will require assistance in my fieldwork and testing. Hmm. It would be our pleasure. We'll be laboring for our own benefit after all. You have two souls inside of you. Both are edgy weeps. <laughs> you have two wolves. One is gay. The other is also gay. You are gay. <laughs> oh, Danny, dog pun, sir. Don't be catty. <laughs> Thank you, Danny. Nice of you to join us. You have spun quite a tale. But tell me, have you given any thought as to how you might return to your world? White ore site, you say. An intriguing proposition. But one which fails to account for the present state of your souls. They have become highly charged likely as a consequence of having maintained tangible forms for so long in such an energetic unstable state they are, there is no telling what may happen to their souls within the aura site they may very they could very well become immutable to transference never to be restored to their bodies then would it be possible to force our souls into a state of dormancy prior to transference in theory, yes, but the soul is not candled to be snuffed out and relit on a whim. <laughs> you are saying this to someone who has been in the flow twice. Well, that sounds ominous. What exactly would rend rendering their souls dormant entail? In order to maintain a corporeal form, your souls constantly drew ether from your surroundings. This process must be halted and the su uh, resulting surfeit of ether removed. Your minds would ultimately be separated from these faux bodies of yours, re rendering you incapable of interacting with the world around you. A cruel fate under normal circumstances, but one which bo uh, will be resurfeit upon your returning home. Leaving lifeless husks. Like those poor souls at the inn at Journey's Head, corrupted by the Sin Eaters, their ether made stagnant by the light. Corrupt? Stagnant? Might I see these unfortunate individuals? Rectified? Whoops. 
Why? Do you think you might be able to help them? I might, or I might not. I shan't know for sure till I've seen their conditions firsthand. Then I should be glad to take you to them, on the understanding that you won't do anything which might increase their suffering. It was my faith on man I lost, not my compassion. Well, I see no need of all of us to accompany you. While you escort our guests to the inn, I will assist Uriange in creating the requisite aura site. I believe my talents would be better applied to that endeavor as well. Might I leave the three of you to assist Beck Lug as necessary? Let us make for armor rang then. <clears throat> All right, let's pay. Let's pay visit to Halric. See how he's doing. Do, do, do. A welcome, welcome guest. Do, 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 do. Oh my god, this is only quest three. Man, the quests in the patch, patch quests are long. So this is Halric, is it? Yes, his etheric balance leans perilously towards the light, towards stasis. What do you suppose will happen to him? Not too bright, are you, boy? <laughs> the same as all poor souls corrupted by the light. You will become a sin eater. You don't know that. We defeated the wardens and banished the light from the night sky. Halric was completely unresponsive before, but now... Then perhaps there is yet hope. Hmm. If I may, there is a treatment I wish to administer to the patients. What sort of treatment? In the course of my studies of the soul, I once created a tonic which could temporarily stimulate the ether in one's body. After some refinement, it came to be used by the kingdom of the Knights of Verbert. Then for far darker purposes. Lest it fall into the wrong hands, I swore never again to make it. But for their sakes, I will break that oath. It is not like to reverse the stagnations, mind you, but it should offer some measure of relief. I like this part too. Hmm. Treat the patients with the tonic, all right. Oh yeah, that's another thing, I just noticed. Our uh, ether compass, it's now in our collections tab now. So that people can't lose it anymore. Actually, I'm gonna keep it as a memento. I never have anything in my key items, so I'm gonna keep that. How were people losing it? I don't know, getting, getting rid of things in their key items, not thinking that they were important even though they're in key items. I mean, if you don't read, you might think this is just a second inventory and they thought that it was a bunch of junk. Might be late due to the queue. That's okay, Danny. That is a-okay. Actually, that might be another reason why there's not so many people like surrounding me as normal, because they're stuck in queue. <laughs> Now then, have you noted any changes in the patients? A notable rise in body temperature and increased motor function, in most of the patients at least. The more severely aff afflicted show no response. On my main leveling, leveling reaper. That's okay, you know. Uh, don't feel, uh, you know, don't feel obligated to uh, join me. I'm just making note. It's very weird on patch day, you know. As I feared, then. 
tis true that with the restoring uh, restoration of the night, the corruption in the corrupting influence of light will no longer grow. And yes, their bodies will naturally return to equilibrium given time. But this holds true only for the corporeal ether. Their incorporeal ether, that of the soul, is not so easily mended. Which is why those in later stages of corruption, like Holrick, appear unaffected by your tonic. Precisely. The boy's soul is too far gone, his mind held together by the finest of threads. There is a, there is a chance he may one day recover, of course, but it could take years, decades even. By the gods, he could wait to find himself an old man. A fine reward for his persistence, the opportunity to mourn the life he never had a chance to live. No, there must be something we can do. Look, I realize this is not why we petitioned your aid, but do you think it possible we can find a way to hasten their recovery? Maybe. Nor do I think it's impossible that in treating them we might learn something of relevance to your own predicament. Hmm. Part 1, getting past the launcher and login screen. Part 2, the screen before the login to the character. Part 3, Q. Yeesh. I suspect the Crystal Exarch has told you of my past, that I was once a mage of the royal court of Verbert, and the soul craft was my field of study. The tonic you administered to the patients here is one of the fruits of my labors. I hope to do, do great things for the kingdom. But in the end, my knowledge brought only suffering, a plague that which, that likes of which none had ever seen. In the hands of an unscrupulous, uh, of unscrupulous men, what should have been my greatest triumph instead became my greatest shame. Hmm. And now you have a chance to redeem yourself. That I do, a comforting thought indeed. But let us return to the task at hand. Finding a means by which we might revitalize these people's incorporeal ether. Do you think it can be done? Were the sky still ablaze with primordial light, I would call it an exercise in futility. But now, now we may have a chance. The method I have in mind will entail the conjuring of a familiar... They are able to amplify energies poured into them, making them the perfect conduit for the etheric, ether revitalizing magics we will ultimately employ. If you are able to launch into a lengthy explanation of the metaphysics of your plan, don't bother. I'd rather get on with doing whatever it is that needs to be done, if that's all the same to, be, to you. <laughs> whatever regions must be procured or spells invoked, I'll do it. I admire your spirit. Very well, your first task will be to gather the necessary materials. The purest of waters and finest of clays, as well as a fey lantern brimming with pixie magic. If you're convinced the resulting familiar could help the patients, fine. Alphano, the water and the clay will be simple enough, but I think you know what we'll have to do to get the lantern. Uh, you don't mean... The Pixies took quite a liking to us before. If we humor them with our company, I'm sure they'll be willing to help us. Uh, fine. We'll pay a visit to, to Ilmeg, though I never thought you'd be the one to suggest going back there. I'm impressed you've been there at all, let alone befriending the Fey Folk. Oh, while you're about, seek out the Nomu of Pla Eni. They will be able to supply you with the water suitable for our needs. Right then, let us get this over with, shall we? There still remains the matter of clay. Might I prevail upon you to find it? Get the clay! I've been queued for three hours? Yeesh! I'm sorry. Speak with Becklog. 
Uh, yeah, the miners at Twine. Yes. Okay. Speak with Magnus. Magnus, you know about clay, right? Yeah, I have. I've only been in queue for like, you know, I was only in a fifty-person queue. Wonder where you guys logged out. If you logged out in Limza or Ulda, that's understandable. Why it would be that long. Hey, Magnus. How's the boulder doing? Victor. Well, what a coincidence. You come at a good time. We've just, at this moment, finished backslashing the Talos and trolling you, uh, the, and trolley you took to Nabatha Rang. The trolley was no trouble, but the Talos would have been another matter had we not had a visit from Master Chai. He offered us a share of the leftover building materials from Daedalus Stoneworks, as well as a few trade secrets to help us along. Clever man that master, uh, that Chai does. He seems pretty keen on the ideas I had putting together the, uh, the giant Talos to work. Like a giant trolley, but Magnus still refuses to see all the good we could do with it. <laughs> You're entitled to your dreams, Jerick, but that doesn't mean that you can go harassing our guests with them. Master Chai was just being polite. And something tells me Victor here didn't come all this way to talk about trolleys. What is it you need, friend? I see, and this familiar requires clay from Armor Ring. Well, look no further. If anyone can find you some quarter clay, it's us. Saying that, it isn't exactly a commodity nowadays, but there must be something lurking around somewhere, waiting to be backslashed. If I'm not mistaken, there was a time when they used a clay to take clay from Mount Br uh, Biran Mines to make adobe bricks. The place is swarming with coyotes now, but if you're after the good stuff, you could do worse than look there. Want something to laugh? I went to get coffee. When I went to uh, get back to my computer, my cat brought in a mouse and I had to catch it and let it free outside because I got auto-logged out and then had to run to the queue ultimate for four hours. Oh no! Oh, you got you got AFK logged out. Damn, because of that one little instance. That sucks. Yeah, at least you got a mouse. <laughs> Lumps of clay. Oh my god, I'm getting levels again. Hold on, wait a minute. I'm getting XP. Look, at the bottom, my level 80 Dark Knight bar is like ever so slightly up. I'm gonna be level 81 by the end of this. Even though these quests don't give any XP. Just through through event of doing the dungeons and stuff. Because uh, level 80 dungeons give XP now. Wasn't Joe a Mandervil in another life? No. I am a Mandervil in spirit, though. Tweeds have returned. Yep, the clay. Wonderful. We need but combine the clay and the water. Eklog, I have a question. In the event that we had need of this spell and weren't around, you weren't around, would it be possible for another to perform the incantation? Assuming they possess the requisite skill, yes. 
Holrick and the others have suffered so much, and I swore to do everything in my power to save them. If there is a chance the spell could do that, I would be the one to invoke it. Hmm, mayhap you should be the one to do so. A deep understanding of the subject's physical state combined with a strong desire to help them can drastically increase the magic's effects, and you are plainly more familiar with these people than I. I dare say there are a few in all in Norfran more dedicated to finding a cure. So not so, Victor. <laughs> hmm, she's the, she is the best woman for the job. I give, I'll give it my all. I'll give it my all! <laughs> Isn't that the line that she reads when you give her, uh, bring her on as a trust? For Halric, for Tesli. Then we are all of a mind on the matter. Alizé shall be one to conjure the familiar. Let's give it our all. I think that's, yeah. Let us begin. I trust you've prepared the clay. Oh, damn. Very good. Now, I would have you sculpt for me a porksy. Plump, with floppy ears and a short curly tail. All right, Alizé, let's see if you can show up your brother in the artistic arts. A porksy. I think I know what you mean. So your brother is the artist and you are the there sculptor. Are. How, how's that? Uh <laughs> Well, it is certainly creative. I love it. I love the face. There's no denying that. <laughs> Yes, yes, I'm no artist. Very funny. <laughs> I love them so much. Pay him no mind, child. Though it may look like a grotesque parody of reality, <laughs> it is what the Invoker believes that matters. <laughs> Though it may look like a grotesque, disgusting parody of the reality. Oh my gosh. Pulling no punches there. You're not helping. Would I speak the truth? If successful, this incantation will turn imagination into reality. Well, but I speak the truth. Your porksy is ugly as sin. Which is why the only thing of import is what you believe this figure embodies. You must focus. Hold the porksy's image steady in your mind's eye. <laughs> uh, don't worry, Alice. Eh? <laughs> it doesn't matter that your sculpture looks like my morning stool. It'll look. It'll turn into a porksy if you believe long enough. <laughs> now then, as I taught you, relax and allow your energies to flow. With flesh of clay, I bid thee rise. On wings of dreams to touch the skies. What once was idle fantasy, I call forth to reality. Hey! Not bad for a first attempt. Now, let us see what can be done for young Halric. Alizé is a conjurer now. Well, not a conjurer, but a uh, summoner. Summoner multi-class. Th 
through the operation of the magics you invoked to animate this familiar, it is now replete with the energies required to stir the boy's soul. You need but give it a name, and it will do as your heart desires. A name. All right, I've decided. Now. Go, Angelo! <laughs> Angelo. Have we heard a character named Angelo before? Oh, hey, looting crew! Hello, thank you. Hi, everybody. This is Massive Spoilers for Shadowbringers. Thank you for the raid. Welcome, everybody. This is post Shadowbringer Spoilers. Uh, oh. uh, um... oh, he speaks. Apparently the dog in Final Fantasy VIII, okay. How is he, Becklug? Did it work? I believe it did. You and your fledgling familiar have done well. If my eyes do not deceive, a hint of color has returned to his soul. God, I would have jumped for joy if I weren't so exhausted. We're so close now, Halric. If you are even now in the process of discovering, this magic asks much of the invoker. What you may not have realized is that the same is also true of the subject. As such, we must proceed with caution. However, with further treatment, I have the utmost confidence the boy will make a full recovery. Observing the reanimation of his stagnant soul has been most enlightening. I will need time to put my theories to the proof, but I believe I can fashion a spell to procure the opposite effect, that is, to induce stagnation, thus enabling our safe transport back to the source via Aurasite. A thought occurred to me about this treatment. Becklug said when the soul is rendered dormant, the mind is separate from the body, that a person becomes incapable of interacting with the world around them. Does that not sound like a sum of the tempering back in the souls? Not really. It is the fate most tempering would become slaves to primals, save in a handful of cases. Or am I missing something? If I can master this technique, the art of revitalizing the soul, I know of a, at least one in the source who could desperately use such treatment. <gasps> Gabu. Exactly. His condition is uncannily similar to Halric's, is it not? The only difference being that his soul was suffered from earth-aspected ether instead of light. It follows that if his soul is subject to a similar kind of stagnation, there may be a chance we can save him. Right? Forgive me, but who is this Gabu fellow of whom you speak? He's a Mord from the Source. I see. His condition does sound familiar, yet there is much and more about that soul, the soul that remains unknown even to me. I say this not to discourage you, you understand, but to remind you that this is a delicate work we have, we do here, requiring uh, work requiring patience. This is Alizé being the hero of her own story. Yes, she has found her own calling and reason to fight. 
Of course. And as long as there is hope for the patients here, I will devote whatever time is needed to see this through. But I refuse to spend that time in idleness. If it's all the same to you, I'd like to stay here with Angelo and continue with their treatment. The two of you should return to the Crystarium with Becklug, see if you can't make some headway with the newly positioned theories. I would tell you to rest first, but I see you are not to be convinced. Ah, uh, the fire of youth. Let's return to the Crystarium then. Finally, I found you. Who's that? Oh, hey! Kaishia! What are you doing all the way down out here? There's trouble back in Yulmore. Lady Shy is beside herself, sighing, pacing the whole lot. Not near begged me to go, uh, near enough begged me to go and find you. And sighing and pacing, you say? It must be urgent. I will take it, I take it, I will be returning to the Crystaria below. Go on then, it's not as if I have anything for you to do. Thank you, Backlog. Sorry for bothering you, you and all that, but she says the future of Yulmore's at stake. Hmm. Future of Yulmore, you say? Lady Chai's up in the parlor. Best not keep her waiting, eh? Let's go. Hi, Phoenix Factory. How you doing? I'm doing a okay. seems out of the ordinary, though I do not see Lady Chai anywhere. Probably pacing around outside again, staring off in the distance and all that, sighing. Strange. Let's see if we can find her and discover the source of her distress. Mom! Mom! Where are you, Mom? Good Mom, best Mom. Where you be? Ah, oh, there she is. Staring off in the distance. Aww. Oh, thank heavens you're here. She loves Alphino so much. Lady Chai, whatever is the matter? You know not where else to turn. Oh, this is all too much for my poor heart to bear alone. Alone? What of Master Chai? That is the very reason I summoned you. He's gone. What? What happened? It all began after the events at Mount Golg. With Lord Vorthry out of the way, we all agreed that a new leader must be chosen. And so you held an election? Yes. Well, sort of. Not a single person volunteered to stand, you see. After a lifetime of leisure, we free citizens have grown somewhat indolent. Readapting to the harsh realities of life is trying enough, but to take charge of a broken city as well. No one wanted such responsibility. Mm. Nevertheless, Yulmore could not well do without a leader, and so we decided that anyone and everyone should be considered a candidate. And after we cast our ballots and tallied the votes, the mayorship fell upon my dear husband. Does make sense. He was able to head the creation of that Talos that brought down Mount Golg. Well, given the manner in which he orchestrated the construction of the giant Talos, none could deny his leadership qualities. Yeah, exactly. But even before then, he had proven himself at Daedalus Stoneworks, don't forget. 
is more than qualified for the role. The perfect choice. If only he weren't so scared of it. Indeed. I told him as much when his victory was first announced. But perhaps I was too forceful in my attempt to encourage him. For shortly after that, he vanished without a word. Aww. <laughs> You believe he was so daunted by the burden of leadership that he felt compelled to flee. Please, Lady Chai, dry your eyes. Your husband does not strike me as the sort of man who would abandon his duty, much less his beloved wife. There has to be some other reason for his absence. You... you truly think so? <laughs> What about you? What do you think has become of my husband? Hmm. <laughs> I think he's fled. No, no, no. He won't have fled. I want to reassure her. And there you have it, Lady Chai. You needn't worry. Master Chai loves you more than all the world, and he will return. Wherever he may have gone, rest assured we will find him. Thank you, my dear boy. You have set my mind at ease. I will trust in my husband and await his return. Best mom. Good mom, best mom. Uh, Alpha no. It makes no sense for Master Shai to have left without a word, but even if he had, he would not have done so unobserved. All right, let's search around. Look, split up, look for clues. Oh my god. Moen. <laughs> Master Chai, why yes, I spoke with him recently. Though I recall he was a ra in a rather dour mood, concerning about Yulmore's neglect of history, you see. With Lord Vothery's apparently inexhaustible store of meal, and no great need for money, it's little wonder our business were all but forgotten under his rule. But, I'm, uh, but I assured Master Chai that the Boutique of Splendors will do all it can to contribute to the re revital, revival of trade here in Yulmar. I'm sure you will, Moen. It seems to satisfy him. He took this leave soon after. Your exchange with Moen has taught you about the stagnant state of business in Yulmar. I like that Moen is uh, the person who's concerned with Yulmar's business ventures. There is no escape. Ooh, looks like I'm dropping a few frames. Has the stream been stuttering for you guys at all? I'm getting red signal a few times. From Master Chai, are you? It's Automus. Made more than a few valid points. Many of our men are still recovering after your confrontation with Lord Bothery. Finding General Ranjit in the heap of the middle of the plaza shook us all to the core. It just did, yeah. It is for now? Oh, jeez. Yeah, my stream... Oh. No, it's okay. It's not a It's not a very busy part right now in the stream. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, you, you keep uploading. Right now, it's not a busy part of the stream. So, I think by the time you're done there will be a not-so-busy part of the stream. Yeah. Pardon, everybody. Echo is doing work. It is her job. 
same job. So you're gonna see a little stuttering for a little while, but uh, I'm sure once we get into duties and gameplay and stuff, should get back to normal. Downloading something? No, she's uploading something. <laughs> I, I recall a man fitting that description. I asked to speak, uh, asked him to speak with the poor buggers lately come from right. Said he wanted to know the state of things down in the derelicts, and you can be sure that we gave him an earful. Lack of food, medicine, clothing, there was plenty to tell. We hunt high and low for whatever we can scavenge, and it's barely enough to fill our bellies. But folk here don't want to survive, they want to thrive. When he heard that, he started mumbling to himself something about finding us work, I think. Fair play to him, though. Not content with having his ear chewed by the derelicts, he asked about some other settlements and all. After that, I can't really say. Looked like he was heading for Gate Town when I saw him. Hmm. So Chai Nuz is actually learning about the people around him, so he knows what he needs to fix. That's pretty good of him. Yeah, don't worry. You're not... The stuttering... Aside, you're not missing out on much, chat, on much that's going on right now. It's just a lot of wandering and talking with NPCs. Adjust the stream quality? I cannot midstream. I would have to stop the stream and uh, do the settings. Ah, there you are. How do you fare? Yeah, it's temporary anyway. Interesting. He apparently paid a visit to the Queen's Bee as well. They discussed the possibility of granting admi admission to customers from outside Yulmor, an idea to which the proprietor was surprisingly receptive. Sound like he's got big plans for the place. Yulmor, I mean, not the Bee. Perhaps, but the question remains, where did he go after leaving the city? All we know for certain is that Master Chai has shown great concern not only for Yulmor, but its surrounding settlements. It seems logical, then, that having consulted with those in the city walls, he would wish to do the same of those without. Victor, if you would make uh, your inquiries in right. Fair enough. Where should we meet when we finished? Top rung. All right. Okie dokie. The Catboy Investigation Duo. Yeah, let me see how it's looking. Yeah, it's just a little slightly low frame rate. It's not too bad. Like I said, there's no, f like, high octane action going on, so it shouldn't be too bad. China is doing his own MSQ is very charming to me. Yeah, yeah, he is kind of going about his own MSQ, isn't he? Name doesn't ring any bells, but there was a rather dapper-looking mistal gentleman here not too long ago. <laughs> you wanted to talk about relations between White and Yulmore, or rather the lack of them. We lost a great many people to the promises of Meol and the chance of lavish life among the free. And Valthory thought to take even more from us, conscripting few able-bodied men we had left to guarantee his paradise. I wouldn't tell you what happened when the senators came, such things are hard to forgive. But Valthory's gone now, and we're curious to see what will become of Yulmore in his absence. That's what I told your friend. Chai knows, was it? And I'm sure others said the same. Not that, uh, not what he wanted to hear, I suppose, because he left soon after, and that was that. Hmm. Top rung. Let's go. This is probably faster than, uh, going to the gate, right? Probably not, actually. Thinking about it. Oh, no, maybe. Probably about the same time. So he paid a visit to both Wright and Gate Town uh, as well, did he? I thought DC travel was going to hit come Endwalker, but it makes sense as to why it's not. Yeah, no, they're doing it like one of the patches. They're waiting for it in one of the patches. If you care to know, Poya is really enjoying the two new jobs and may well pick them up as her healer in melee DPS. Oh, really? She picked up, was she, is she already level 70? Jeez, okay. Wow, good for her. 
I see. Kaishia and I gleaned as uh, much the same. He seemed determined to salvage what goodwill might yet remain among the settlements of Calusia, the only likely place he has left to go being Amity. Come, if we are quick, we may yet catch up with him. Oh, whoops, I don't know why I swapped to that. Amity, Amity, Amity. Okay. DC travel set for 6.1. I don't think it's confirmed for 6.1. I think they said at least 6.1 or or more or or later. I don't think there's been any hard yeses or hard dates. Oh, there you are. What's up, Sid of the First? Victor, Al uh, Victor, Alphino, Kaishia, uh, what are you doing here? We might ask you the same, Master Chai. We've been looking all over for you. Looking for me? Whatever for? Lady Chai has been nigh inconsolable in your absence. She claims you disappeared without so much as a word, and bade us return you to her side. What in blazes are you talking about? I left a letter for her in our chambers. I suppose she could have overlooked it, and when she gets the idea in her head, uh, I can only apologize. No harm done, Master Chai, but since we are here, might I ask you what compelled you to come all this way? We were told that you had been elected mayor, and from what we've gathered from the nearby villages, you have been inquiring about people's grievances. Is it safe to assume you mean to take office? Now, now, uh, let's not jump to conclusions. I did seek to learn about the problems faced by the people of Calusia, that much is true, but I am by no means sure I am a man to solve them. Tackling our many challenges will require resources until I have secured them. It would not be right to assume the role of mayor. I see, and you believe said resources can be found here. Indeed, the people's grievances are many, but in the course of my inquiries, I have, uh, I have already met with several individuals willing to lend their aid in addressing them. However, there remains one individual crucial to my plans, a man whose counsel might yet make a mayor of me. With respect, such forethought is it's in itself proof of your suitability. The city needs you, Master Chai. And I am certain this man of whom you speak, whoever he may be, will reach the same conclusion. For what little is, it is worth, we will vouch for you, should he require convincing. Is the stream at low FPS? Yeah, it should be back to normal soon-ish. Yeah, my, uh, my OBS is in the green now. So let's see. We believe in you, Master Chai. Looking fine to me? Yeah, it should be back to normal now. If it doesn't, try refreshing the page. I... I don't know what to say. Congrats on uploading a video. Yeah. Thank yeah. you anyway. Yeah, of course. Good job. You did it. You did a thing. You don't need to say anything. You've got your actions to speak for you. For as long as I can remember, all I ever wanted to do was make it to Yulmore. But that dream's gone now. Burst like a bubble. Or boil, more like. Anyway, outside of repaying Master Alphino, I haven't had much of a clue what to do with myself. Spent most days in a daze. But you, you've been running up and down trying to find a way to fix this mess for everyone. And I reckon you can do it. You got this, uh, you got this lot up Mount Gold, did you, didn't you? How hard could it could marrying be? You're going to steer your more to a better future. I know it. And I want to help. Properly help. Do something that makes a difference. I don't know what it is yet, but I'll work it out on the way. If you let me come with you, that is. You give me entirely too much credit, a lot of you. And I can't deny it gives me heart. Come then, let us press on together.
Thank you, Master Chai. But we mustn't get ahead of ourselves. Yulmore needs more than a man with good intentions, which is why I am here, to find one with the experience needed to see the city thrive. Who is this man exactly? And are you certain he's here in Amity? Rendon is his name, and yes, he is. Or was. I had scarcely begun to explain myself when he decided his time was better spent elsewhere. He served as chief advisor of Wolfrey's father when he was in office. If Ranjit was the mayor's right hand, one might say Rendon was the left, and between them they kept Yulmore on the road to prosperity. The city needs more than a mere man of business, which is why I must find him. But even if you do, what makes you think he will listen? Before giving chase, might it not be wise to speak with those who know him here in Amity? They may be able to shed some light on his reason for rejecting your overtures out of hand. Yes, I suppose that makes sense. Perhaps we should start with Tristel then. And uh, as I recall, you made a rather favorable impression on him. I'm certain he would be willing to talk to us. Four K, holy crap! Four K Q. What data center are you in? Greetings, friend, and to you too, Master Chai. I presume you are here to ask about Rendon. Yes, yeah, well, with Valthry gone, you're more once for a leader. Should no one rise to the challenge, the city could very well collapse. I came here seeking Rendon's counsel in the hope that we would build a better Yulmore to more together. And that is still my wish. Given how ab abominably you were mistreated there, I will quite understand if you choose not to help. Worry not, Master Chai. Uh, uh, worry not, Master Chai. I, will, I bear no grudge against your people of Yulmore, and I will not see you suffer for Valthry's villainy. As you have no doubt gathered your meeting earlier, Rendon can be rather uncompromising. He has a, a set of principles and little patience for anyone he deems less committed to their own. Your desire to right the wrongs of your past, of Yulmore's past, is quite admirable, but I fear the guilt you bear on the city's behalf works against you. I can see it in your eyes, in the way you carry yourself. It goes without saying that he sees it as well. You, you must not let your feelings, uh, those feelings go, Master Chai. Be more assertive. Commit to this course and prove to him Yulmore has the resolve to change. The resolve to change. I believe he was heading towards Pit 8 when he left. All right. Very well, to Pit 8. Famfrit was at 500 a little bit ago. Jeez. I better not log out then. <laughs> I'm scared to log out. Unless I log out at an inn, that is. Gave up when it was at 7k. Yeesh. Yeah, Brynhilda is fine. Maybe it's just maybe it's just unique to uh, Crystal. Maybe Crystal's just safe. Except for Balmung, that's true. Well, well, it's you again. Oh, look, it's uh, Danny from uh, it's Danny's uh, shard from the first. <laughs> well, I see you've invited your friends. Need them to fight your battles for you, do you? I I, I didn't invite them, as it happens. Uh... Though they are indeed my friends, well, not only mine, but every true Yulmorans. They are the ones who awakened us to the truth, to Lord Vorthry's villainy, the famous warriors of darkness. Who are they now? Yes, they are. It would be no exaggeration to call them our saviors. We owe much and more to their kindness, but we cannot depend on that kindness forever. To do so would be a little different from entrusting our affairs to Lord Vorthry. Nay, we must learn to stand on our own two feet, and I would have them present to witness my attempt. Hear, hear, Master Chai. Your sentiments are admirable, yet admirable sentiments do not a nation make. In my capacity as advisor, I once strove to build a better Yulmore. Gave honest counsel to my superiors, drafted laws for the benefit of one and all. 
But in time, my values fell out of favor. There was no need for them in this paradise Vorthri was creating. And so I left my homeland behind. Hmm. But you, Chai News, you were content to wallow in indolence under Vorthri's auspices. News? And so I cannot help but ask myself what manner of nation you intend to build. It was news this whole time, not Nuz? Okay. I... Uh, I can offer no simple answer to that question. There's a U in there? Oh, I guess, um... I guess we should, uh... Sorry, I goose. I goose. We should start pronouncing things with U's with a U sound from now on. I have to go scratch my boot. Because it's itchy. Sorry, because it's itchy. But this much I will say. Uh, Chai News, that's pronounced boot. It is my hope that Yulmore can become a nation which her citizens might freely choose to build together. Bold, bold, it's bold. A great many people, myself included, flocked to Yulmore seeking sanctuary. The alternative being to live in fear and die in pain. It seemed an easy choice. And sanctuary we found. As much food and drink as we could ever want. Secured at the cost of the surrounding villages. Oh, whoops. The free were blind to it all, of course. Content to, as you say, wallow in indolence. In ignorance. Were I mayor, I would first take stock of the city's resources and see that they were assigned equitably. Our days of reckless consumption are behind us. The distinction between free and bonded died with Vorthri. The needs of rich and poor alike must be considered if our nation is to survive. English is stupid. English is very stupid. To which end I would take steps to secure channels for supplies, rekindle relations with nearby settlements, who re-establish industry, reach out to neighboring nations, and the list goes on and on. But I am no ruler, nor even a politician. I am an entrepreneur. In all fairness, UE should be a long U sound. Yeah, we'll say that to uh, all the UEs that are silent. My expertise lie in planning and profit. I haven't the knowledge or experience to run a nation. Aw, oh, Chai. Master Chai, you are so humble. You're a pleasant guy. Please, Rendon. Will you not help me? Together. We could solve the city's problems. Build a Yulmor for the people. A Yulmor for the people. I rather like the sound of that. Oh. But before I offer you my counsel, I would be certain of your ability to perform the duties of office. You would? You ask me to help you solve Yulmore's problems, but first I would see you solve one on your own. Accomplish that, and you will prove both to me and the people that you are a man <laughs> worth following. He basically said, if you're nothing without the Rendon, you don't deserve the Rendon. If you're nothing without the Rendon, you shouldn't have it. Ahem. Uh, right then. 
Uh, is there a particular issue you would have me resolve? You seem to have conducted an assessment of the problems the Old Moor now faces. I assume you will agree, therefore, that the matter of dwindling food stores is most pressing. Ah, yes, meal being neither a desirable nor less sustainable option, I assume alternative foodstuffs are now required to fill the void. A man who hungers is not like to contribute much to society, save violence, perhaps. So tell me, how do you propose we solve this problem? Give me a satisfactory answer, and I will consider offering you my counsel. Come on, come on, Chai, you can do it. I believe in you. <clears throat> a combination of measures would seem to be in order. One's to address the immediate issue of supply, and another that of production. Go on. For the present, Yulmore's coffers can be used to purchase food from other neighbors. This would afford us a time to address the underlying problem that affects us all, the long-standing neglect of agriculture. The villages that once served as sources of trade for foodstuffs must be repopulated, their means of production restored. This assumes, of course, that we can rekindle relations with our neighbors, guarantee security and stability in the region, and most importantly, find people willing to leave the city and take up the rebuilding effort. My, my. Think of that all by yourself, did you? Uh, well, uh, yeah, yeah, yes. It began a rather abstract plan I drafted some time ago, after speaking with the people of Yulmore by the nearby settlement. Hmm. You've impressed me, Master Chai. Uh, I, I have? Well, that is a relief. Oh, you haven't secured my support just yet. Only my attention. Grand plans have, will not be enough to persuade the masses. If you would ask them to rebuild, you must provide them the, me the means to do so. Uh, a fair point, Rendon, and one to which I have given much thought. I propose to use uh, the use of Talos to aid in the establishment and maintain maintenance of these settlements. Their employment should drastically improve efficiency and ultimately increase production. Talos? but Daedalus Stoneworks closed their doors years ago. Without a ready supply of the necessary equipment, the people would starve before your plans could be put into effect. Well, as the heir to Daedalus Stoneworks, it just so happens that Talos are my field of expertise. And with that, with a little help, I am quite certain that we will acquire what we need in no time at all. All right. Chai news. Chat of the century, all right. <laughs> Fool, I am Daedalus Stoneworks. And it is right. Building a Talos from scratch would require time we simply do not have. Which is why I propose that we make use of the long abandoned Talos which wanders the wilds of Calusia. What? It will need to be deactivated. All right, kill some monsters. Oh, look, there's some Talos in the chip. <laughs> why is it called Stupid Rock Man? <laughs> why? Why is that emote called Stupid Rock Man? <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Cinder Spider hates Talos? Why? They're so cool. Does he hate the boulder? The Bolzer resents Cinder Spider for calling him a big rock man. <sighs> ah, the old memory hasn't let me down. This chest contains canisters filled with dashedly potent insulation powder. Blah, blah, blah. Yep, disable them. Throw the powder. Yeah, sorry if I'm skipping through. Even if the Talos isn't a threat, 
There's 101 other things we should, uh, would make a meal out of you. That may be Kaishir, but Rendon tasked me with solving this problem. I will not sit idly by and risk, while others risk everything to see my hair brain schemes realized. Not this time. Oh, he's gonna go disable the towers himself. Yeah, this isn't really all that plot relevant. Like this, this cutscene specifically. All right, here, here. Yeah, I want to speed up my progress somewhat. All right, so we got to protect Master Chai from the dangers while he procures the Talos himself. Yeah, the rain stopped. So that's the gist of this mission. Instead of having us fight the Talos, he's gonna... Yeah. <laughs> Rendon is a Danny, but without my beard, though, I can see it. That is true. He's... he's... He is Danny without the beard. Yeah, he, he is very like protecty and, and bodyguardy and consultant. Okay. Hmm. Uh, alert Master Chai when it's safe to approach the Talos. And now, go! Come on, Chai News, you can do it! Don't be intimidated by its size. Nice. I did it! I did it! Let's move on to another tallow, shall we? Oh my god, there are bombs there. Okay. Sneak mission, sneak mission. Go. Oh, no, shit. Oh, damn. Oh. <laughs> damn. Whoops. We try again. It was turned around, was it not? Maybe not turned around enough. There we go. Mission fails, we'll get him next time. Yeah, let's skip this. She baited. Bum. Bop. Bum. 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 Not that way. Come on. No, bombs are there now. Go away, bombs. There we go. Very nice. I believe I'm getting the hang of this. You may leave the next one to me, Victor. Oh, shit! This is gonna go all on its own. Look at him. Wow. That should do it. Now we have all that we need to proceed. Damn. I don't know how you're gonna... I don't know how you're gonna walk your way back to Yulmore dragging those massive balls with you. <laughs> I can scarcely believe it. 
It was a reckless, foolish plan, but somehow it worked. <laughs> Dulia ain't sleeping tonight. <laughs> I... I did it. Master Chai, I believe I owe you an apology. Your plan to replenish your Moore's food stores showed forethought and sound judgment. What's more, it is plain your time in Daedalus Stoneworks has equipped you to lead as evidenced by the extraordinary company you keep. You, sir, are more than qualified to be the next mayor of your Moore. I thank you for your vote of confidence, but the fact remains, I am wholly ignorant of the world of politics. Which is why I ask you to join me and grant Yulmore the benefit of your counsel. I would be honored. When the people behold these Talos, I have no doubt they will lend you their support. It would seem Yulmore's leadership is at last in capable hands. Would you not agree? We should probably be getting back soon, Master Chai. After you've tinkered with the Talos and all that, Lady Chai's worried sick. There's some really wholesome fan art of the Chai's together that I wish I could share if it weren't for the fact it's it's like wholesome, not safe for work. It's very sweet. Right. Right then, uh, form a line and make for your more. Here we go, Talos. A perfect time of day for it, too. Oh, wait, actually, this might be a bad idea. What's that noise? Wicked white! Run away, Talos! Call the guard! Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah, shit. Why are you all here if you're afraid of the Talos? Stay back, all of you! <gasps> Is that? Hey. But of course I'm back. You didn't see. <gasps> oh. <laughs> yes, I, I got. God. <laughs> oh no, he's dead. Oh, oh dear. Soft and strong, mommy. <laughs> the healing. <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh, thank you. I'm sorry, my darling. It's just the sight of you filled me with such joy. I couldn't help myself. Oh, no, no, it, it's all right, dear. I, I should have just come out and said what it was I was intending instead of entrusting the task to a hastily scribbled letter. Does that mean you'll do it? Well, I'm here, aren't I? I mean, not, not, not that my absence signified any unwillingness, you understand? Oh, no, naught could be further from the truth. I only left to enlist the aid of the former mayor's senior advisor. And now that I have it, I believe I am ready to take office.
I think she may have a crush on him. <laughs> Oh. oh, not again. <laughs> Damn it, please. <laughs> oh. The waggling. Oh. Goals. Fine, I just need a moment. Thank you again for finding my husband. I confess I was not expecting your return to be quite so grand. That dear sweet man, he is going to make the most wonderful mayor, I just know it. That was quite the reception. Uh, one Master Chai will struggle to forget. Well, seriously, the arrival of the Talos has seized the public's attention. Once word has spread around Yulmore, it would, uh, would be much simpler to gather one and all so Master Chai can make his inaugural address. There's no time to lose. Master Chai, pick yourself back up. No need to fret, Victor. I have never felt better. <coughs> and not at all over roared by the prospect of addressing the ensembled masses of Yulmore, the assembled masses of Yulmore. And for where to do it, if we're to accom uh, accommodate everyone who might feasibly wish to attend, I suppose the only place large enough would be the emergent. Then I will go and spread word among the citizens, both free and bonded, that they are to assemble there to meet their new mayor. You there, uh, Kaishir, was it? Would you go and inform the residents of Gate Town and the Derelicts? Of course I will. Good lad. I will let the guards know not to bar the way uh, to Vorthory's chambers. It goes without saying that I expect the Warrior of Darkness to attend, assuming he's available. Might as well see it through to the bitter end, eh? The doorman at the Crown Lift will show you out. Party in Vothry's chambers. I'm gonna steal his stuff. I call dibs on his pillows. They look big and fluffy. Oh yeah, tells. That's right. I should be careful about tells. I like you a lot. Okay. Actually, yeah. Uh, eh, isn't that the way you want Miss <laughs> Captain to treat you? Listen, just because you're right doesn't mean you should say it. Although I will say, pardon, apologies, Danny, but uh, for the safety of myself, I think I will be turning off tells, and that goes for all of you in the chat as well. So I will not be seeing any more tells just for the safety. So I'm going to be turning this off and then... But I appreciate you wanting to message me and all that and communicate nonetheless. Thank you. There we go. There we go. Ah, yes. Master tried to tell us about you. Yeah. Because uh, some people, some nasty people are putting spoilers and stuff. Or if, if there are, we, you know, in, in case there are, we want to be careful. Um, <clears throat> Go on, dear. Yeah, apparently Crystal is not suffering the same population issues as the other DCs, luckily. Thank you all for gathering here today. Uh, but before going any further, could I, could I ask the free citizens of Yulmore to look around?
It is a sight none of us would ever have seen under Lord 4-3's rule. Oh, Crystal's the least populated DC, is it? I didn't know that. Not only do we stand in the familiar presence of those At we least once in called NA. the bonded, but today we welcome the peoples of the derelicts and Gate Town too. Today we welcome the warriors of darkness, come to bear witness to Yulmor's new beginning. As you know, an election was recently held, at the end of which I had the honor of being chosen to succeed Lord Vothry. You place great faith in me, and I promise to do my utmost to live up to your expectations, and I will seek always to carry out the duties of this office with integrity and fairness. Always, I say, but not forever. Let it be known that I do not intend to hold this post indefinitely. I consider myself but an acting mayor who will serve only for the interim, while Yulmor is reshaped according to a new set of values. Are all the Scions considered Warriors of Darkness? I think so, yes. Like, they, they just call the collective Scions the, uh, the Warriors of Darkness. No longer can we think of ourselves as divided, as the free and the bonded, citizens and non-citizens. The systems put in place by Lord Vorthry must be undone. But even as we tear down the old, we must give thought to the new, to what manner of nation Yulmore should become. Whatever the answer may be, it cannot be decided by one man alone. And so I propose that an open forum be held, that we might all discuss how best to strive towards a better future. However, there can be no talk of the morrow unless we first address the issues of today. Securing new sources of food, rebuilding relations with our neighbors, re-establishing industry. There is much and more that needs to be done. Too much for a mere man of business. And so I pledge instead to do everything in my power to ensure our city's security and stability while we all work together to see these problems solved. The road before us will not be easy. And I know full well how daunting the prospect of honest labor may seem to some of you. But we must accept the reality of our circumstances. We must move forward. This much we owe to ourselves and to the brave heroes who risked their lives to bring back the night. Once we have shored up our city's foundations and regained some semblance of normality, let us reconvene to speak of the future. Until then, I humbly ask that you lend me and each other your strength for Yulmo! I'll drink to that. <laughs> yeah! Kaishir is so good. <laughs> Fast cut. Very nice. <clears throat> mm. 
man, I almost got jump scared by that uh, Yule Moore theme. Oh, speaking of, now I don't want any trash talk about other other streamers, all right, even the ones that are a little bit divisive, but uh, a certain WoW, former WoW player named Soda Poppin started playing this game. And it's really funny, every time he made it to Rock Tika, uh, he story boosted, and I don't want anyone shit talking, all right? People can play however they want. But he's, he's story boosted, and he made it to Rock Tika, and he gets jump scared every time Lahi starts, and it's really funny. <laughs> oh, jeez. Like every time, Lahi, and he's like, oh, fuck, uh, Jesus. <laughs> uh, it's, it's really funny. That was a fine speech, ma um, speech, Master Chai. I believe your words stirred every soul in attendance. Uh, stirred them to action, I hope. If I've learned anything from all this, it is that change begins with the individual. It is but a matter of finding the strength to take the first step. Assuming my fellow Mulemorans can, it shall be my honor and privilege to help them walk this road we have chosen. But we must not forget the individuals who made all these changes possible. Were it within my power, I would carve a tribute to your heroism into the very stone upon which this city stands. Aww. I hate to change the subject, darling, but now that you have officially taken office, have you given any thought to your mor uh, mor uh, mayoral seat? Yeah, his name was bad. He will not be moving into the emergent, dearest. Oh, we, we will not be moving into the emergent, dearest. It is too big for one thing, and too far from the people for another. We will retain our current residence, and I will govern here in the parlor. Oh, I was hoping you'd say that. I much prefer the view from the parlor. Uh, beg your pardon, Master Chai, but have you got a uh, time for a word? Oh, hello. Whoa, hello, sir. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, Harvin, uh, bet? Aye, that's me. I like your speech. But there are folk outside these walls and uh, as don't even have enough food to last till tomorrow. And more who are counting their crumbs. If you have, pla if you have plans to change that, I want to help set things in motion. Uh, then we've much to discuss. No sooner shall I take office than my work begins in earnest. Well, I suppose I brought it upon myself. Thank you again for your help, Victor. I hope to see you again before long. What a day. I don't know what it means exactly. But I don't know. Uh, I do know. I've got plenty to think about. I sense we all have a great deal to consider. I had resolved to remain here until such a time as Yulmore's future was secured. But it is clear to me now the city is in capable hands. I like this. 5.1 is basically about wrapping, like, starting the conclusions to both Alphano and Alizé's first quests when you meet them. I have every confidence that they will find their way. And I believe it is time we went on ours. Aw, that's nice. Yeah, so my... I will say my opinion on Soda Poppin because he's he is he's got some work to do I think as a person but I don't mind people like him coming to play 14 because only I can see one of two things happening when a controversial person person starts playing 14 right 
either one, they will learn to like the game and learn to better their behavior, and, you know, just be a overall more pleasant person because they have to, which is good. I, I believe in redemption, and I know not everyone's going to believe that for all of the WoW players. Maybe that's a little naive and optimistic of me, but I see potential in change in people. And two, uh, either that, so that's option one. Option two is they just don't play. They just end up not liking the game and they don't play and we don't have to hear from them again. I think either those are the two possibilities that'll happen. So we've got nothing to worry about, you know? Like Asmongold somewhat. Yeah, I'm, I'm more forgiving of Asmongold than most people are. I don't believe he has a lot of bad takes. He does have some, but most of the time, his, his biggest flaw is that he's just kind of a dick, you know? Otherwise, most of his takes aren't terrible. He's just kind of an ass about it, you know? What's that, what's that quote from Rick and Morty? It doesn't matter how right you are when you're an asshole, nobody wants to give you the satisfaction. Something like that. So Alphino's leaving too, is he? Seems like everyone's moving on. Everything's changing. I've been thinking about what I should do in, in all this. I, like I told you, I spent most of my time dreaming about living here with my friends in paradise. That paradise is gone, but something's, uh, something better's ta uh, taken its place. Now I reckon I want to be part of it. This you and more for the people Master Chai's been going on about ain't gonna build itself after all. Not that I'm much of a builder. Me and my friends will find a way to make a difference though. Help think, keep things changing for the better. A far nobler dream than one uh, than the one of which you clung before, and once I am happy to say we share. Whatever path you may choose, I pray for your success. Well, when you put it like that, there's no going back now, is there? We've got a few ideas on how we can do our bits. It's just a matter of taking the first step. Asmund Gold uses the Arsler. Yeah, I know, and I, I don't like that. And he has a little bit of like underlying toxic masculinity about him and underlying homophobia, but I do I do hope that he does better, you know. Learning about the um the brothels and 14's community and the you know the ERP and like just, you know men playing women has I think eased him in to be more accepting of the less masculine parts of masculinity and men doing whatever the hell they want. But he's still got a ways to go, I feel, in terms of his behavior. I do hope for it, though. What does help me is if Yoshi P is willing to tolerate and believe in him, then I'm willing to give him a chance. Yoshi P is. Yeah, I don't actively watch his stuff either, but... That has been my creed for a long time, is like, learning more about Yoshi P and his own beliefs, like... I think, um, when Shen asked him the... So, Shen... I don't know if this is okay to say, actually. Ah, it's whatever, it's Shen's, you know. Shen asked Yoshi P the gender lock question on my behalf, and I think after the interview, he told Shen a story about he how he saw, like, some parents uh, looking away from a guy who is, you know, dressed up in a dress, essentially, and he's, he talked about how sad it made him. And I think Yoshi P is a very tolerant man and, and believes a lot in, uh, letting people live however they want. And, uh, I hope that rubs off on people who play this game. Feel like that's more S-E than Yoshi P? I don't think so, because the first thing Yoshi P did during their interview was wish his mom well. Yoshi P keeps up with people and actually seems to have an interest in the content creators. Because that was when Asmund's mom was still sick uh, before she passed, sadly. And Yoshi P was like, I know it's, it's tough for you to be here and I hope your mom's health is well, you know? He keeps up with community. And I think we should follow his example in terms of at least, at least in terms of good etiquette and manners, because that man is a treasure in that regard. You know, I like to ask myself, okay, what would Yoshi P think about this behavior? <laughs> you know, what would I, what would Yoshi P do? Welcome back. 
We are given to understand a new mayor has taken office in Yulmore. And I, I assume another reason why I think so is because some of the responses that Yoshi P made seemed tailor-made for Asmin to kind of like, you know, because we're all, I think all of us kind of start to take on the mannerisms and topics and stuff with other, co when we're in company of others. And there was one answer that he made that very much resonated with Asmund, where he was like, uh, he questions with certain other MMOs, wondering, do they even play their own game, you know? And I think that really hit home for both Asmund and Rich, who was, uh, because that's something that they have both asked about, like, World of Warcraft, and that was a funny little moment. I think Rich is precious, though. I like, I like Rich. He, he seems like a good lad. Indeed, our good friend Master Chai was elected by popular vote, and after some consideration, a considerable soul searching, chose to accept the post. It is a shame you weren't able to attend his inaugural speech, though I have no doubt you will see more of him in the future. I hate that he's become a, talk, a constant talking point. Is he, though? I don't see him as one. He's just a dude. That's all he is. His opinion only matters as much as anybody else's. But tell me, how fared you in preparing the White Ore site? Our work did not proceed quite as expected. In your absence, we had a frank discussion on the principles of soul transference, and concluded at length that white orosite was ill-suited for our purposes. But, Ariande, did you not say that, compared to the massy soul of an Asian, the stone could house one of ours with ease? That I did. And armed as we are with Becklug's invaluable insight, twould indeed prove a trifling matter were we to disregard the in, in, inviolable, inviolable link twixt mind and soul. A link which would, we did belatedly realize, be weakened most perilously in the process of rendering our souls dormant, as Orosite doth require. Thus, the shedding of these fleshy simulacra and the surfeit of ether which compromiseth them would in all likelihood deprive us of our psyches as well. It would theoretically be possible to channel your minds into the aura site instead, but we would more than likely sacrifice your souls in the process. Which is why we have abandoned the plan, and instead devoted our time into finding a means by which mind and soul might be transported together. Then we are no closer to a solution than we first began. It is a vexing conundrum indeed, a one for which the Crystal Exarch has poised a most intriguing solution. When our discussion turned on uh, to the transference of memories and the psyche, I could not help but be reminded of a technique that which I have personally experienced. Victor, do you recall when we learned uh, what we learned of my eye? from our encounter with Doga and Une. I speak of the royal eye of, Allegan, of the Allegan Imperial line, gifted to my forebearers through the blood of memories of the ancient Allegans. It is by this gift that I am able to control the Crystal Tower. If we were to gain an understanding of the technology by which the Allegans were able to accomplish this transference, perhaps then we could keep mind and soul together. Oh, are we gonna do a blood drive for the Exarch? <laughs> It's like, all right, Grahatia, I know you don't like needles, but if you look away, it'll be over in an instant. <laughs> Imagine, if you will, a device like unto a soul crystal, replete not only with our, our worldly memories, but also the bountiful energies of the soul. This is our current avenue of invest investigation, and we will follow it wheresoever it leads. Yeah, you get a cookie and some orange juice. While we are thus engaged, I think it best that Victor return to the source and inform Kryle and the others of our findings. Agreed. I imagine Tataru will be relieved to hear we've made progress on the, of the sort. Then I should beg leave to relay our findings unto Thancred and Reen, and to assist where I may in their investigation of the Empty, becoming a second dad to our new Goth daughter. Yes, please do. 
Should we have need of your counsel, we will not hesitate to summon you. Give our regards to, Ta to Taru, won't you? What if this whole time, what if, what if this whole time, like, <laughs> like, it turns out the Warrior of Light was lying their ass off and, like, the signs were just actually dead. <laughs> and we're tell Tataru, oh, yeah, we were at the first, you know, this other dimension. And then, like, we try to keep up our act. <laughs> and then it turns out, oh, that's really morbid, actually. I don't, I don't like that what if. It's very sad. But yes, that raid is all about the two dads, Thancred and Urianje, helping, helping their new daughter find a girlfriend. Because <laughs> they don't have any proof that we've been to the first. Victor, you're back. How did everything go in the first? Wait, don't tell me. Quarrel will be here shortly. All right. Oh, several cutscenes in sequence. All right, get cozy, everybody. Yeah, end of the patch. Three hours in. Sorry to keep you waiting. At this rate, I'll be done in ten. I've carried out the treatment as per Master Matoya's instructions. It should slow the destabilization of their corporeal ether quite significantly. But tell me, how fair are friends in the first? All right, so the white orosite plan's not going to work, so instead we got to find a way to extract the blood out of Grahatia. Probably give him a cook. So this Becklug's the first to lead an authority on Soulcraft, are they? Sounds promising. And Urianger's proffered solution of white orosite is rather ingenious now that I think of it. Yeah, but it didn't work. Well, while they press on with their preparations, you may rest assured we will continue to do our part here. Oh, you're back. <laughs> and none the worse for wear, I see. Estinian, oh, thank the gods. We've been worried sick. Did you lose your Link Pearl or something? The situation in Garlemald has become more complicated. I was making my escape from the capital when I ran into one of yours, Riol. He thought it best we come straight here. Ah, oh, what a good boy. More complicated how? <laughs> Where to begin? After entering the Empire via Raz at Han, I went about my mission of investigating Black Rose. It was then, inside a provincial factory, that I encountered the one who styles himself Shadow Hunter, Gaius Baelsar. Gaius Baelsar! Our goals being apparently aligned, we joined forces and ventured on into the heart of the capital. To the very Imperial Palace itself. Yeah, Razadhan, we can go there now. Yeah. There, we found a man whom all assumed dead. But his soul lives on. And he has rested back his flesh. Xenos Ye Galvas. I guess it would make him Sauce Galvis now, huh? Nor did the surprise end Or Galvis, rather. For no sooner had we arrived than he murdered his sire in cold blood. The Emperor is dead. They sent Gaius into a rage, and he charged in, blade drawn. Gaius Sus Galvis. Or, or Xenos Z Z Fucking Garlean names. Oh, 
I've seen him in action. His body, at least. You will not best him alone. Nay, death will not come easily to that thing. If you would join me, then by all means. For what good it will do. The Black Wolf and the Azure Dragoon. I suppose this might suffice. Come then. Oh. Well, that's hardly fair. Oh, jeez. Toss him like a rag doll. Oh, teamwork! Holy shit! Oh, I forgot about this. Oh my god, they're so cool! Ah, the simple pleasure of one's own flesh. Truly, there is no place like home. Abomination. Whatever he is, Victor was baby barely a match for him. If we stay here much longer. Emperor Varus, Irradiance, are you all right? We may wear, uh, wear out our welcome. Oh, shit. Your Radiance, no! <sighs> Must even the most middling of sport be spoiled? The world conspires to bore me. When I have no cause to remain, I leave these vermin to you. Xenos! What the fuck, he can teleport? Oh my god! Oh shit! Well, any other bright ideas? Just one. Oh! Oh my god! Oh my god, I'm wet. The intruders have taken flight. I repeat, the intruders have taken flight. Deploy all available Magitek armor. We cannot let them escape. Fuck, dude. <gasps> oh, yes, this, 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 this part. Yeah, I get to play as a stadium. Yes. Die. God. Jump. 
sky dra dragon dive. Jeez. Also, look at the potency on that. 800 potency. That is unfair. Always sprinting. We make ourselves easy marks by moving together. I suggest we split up. All right, then. I take the low road, so to speak. Woo! Splitting up. Here we go. Always sprinting. I will see you outside. Stay safe. Estinian <laughs> is always sprinting. Someone's been busy. Ah, oh, shit. It's another Ultima weapon. Ah! Good. Volatile prototype Arc Ultima. And you would bar my way, would you? So be it. Come, Nidhogg! Lend me your strength! Yeah, it's very spooky. Whoops. <laughs> Accidentally left that on. Whatever, it fits. I think it is time for tacos. Ooh, Star Diver. Track and Lance. Horrid Roar. I can just use this anytime. Shit, dude. So what is this? 600 all nearby. Oh, this is a dot. Okay. 3,000 potency. What the fuck, Estinian? Goosh. The power of the Azure Dragoon. Taco so big, fat taco so big, fat taco so green. So big, fat tackles, so big, fat tackles, so big. Kill these. I should kill these. Oosh, there we go. Well, what, what? There we are. God. Jesus, Stinian. How come you get to use Star Diver so often? I can only use it once every 10 seconds. This is on a six second cooldown. Dragon Shadow Diver. Nidhogg, show them your fury. Whoa. Taste my lance. <laughs> Fucking cool.
Golgarlians and the Machina. Now, where are you guys? Oh, jeez. Oh, Kral, you saw it too. Are you all right? Peer into my past, did you? Yeah, it was fun. Well, I didn't quite relive the experience as you did, but I bore witness to it all. I'm still not sure what I think of this gift of yours. But no matter. Our confrontation was cut short when the Imperial Guard arrived. It was then that Xenos took his leave, citing boredom. To think their research into the Echo could bear such fruit. Escaping death, jumping from one body to the next, and returning to his own after all this time. <clears throat> he is an Asian in all but name. He could even teleport. It beggars belief, aye. But no more than hero traversing the rift between worlds. My concerns are far more prosaic. With the Emperor dead and the Crown Prince missing, the Empire is in disarray. Missing, you say? So he didn't return to the throne. There's a power vacuum now. Until order is restored, assuming it even possible, we needn't fear an Imperial reprisal. And for reasons of his own, Xenos took it upon himself to rid the world of Black Rose. Riol has already gone to apprise the Alliance leaders of these developments. We may leave the matter in their hands for now. Yeah, weapon quest line. Yeah, I guess the weapon quest line does delve more into what's going on in Garlemald. Then perhaps we have seen the last of the fighting at Gimlet. Though, if it comes to civil war, I cannot help but fear for the provinces. Yeah. Like, like it or not, Garlemald does have civilians and innocent people in it. This will not be good for them. Ah, oh, I'd nearly forgotten to ask. What became of Gaius? Did he not escape with you? That he did. But we parted ways shortly after leaving Garlemald. He claimed another threat had arisen which demanded his attention. He didn't elaborate. But the absence of some device or other in the capital gave him reason to believe they're planning something. The second civil war for Garlemald in, what, a year? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can tell that the, the Empire is falling apart at the seams. It's had tears in its structure Just for a while, are. but... I believe he has well and truly shed the Black Wolf's pelt. Conquest is no longer his objective. We may safely leave him to his own devices. For now, at least. Well, it's nice to have one less foe to worry about, even if we do have a mysterious new threat to look out for instead. Speaking of which, I'll see that Riol and Al Shinobi are made aware. Though we still know next to nothing, it can't hurt to be vigilant. Well then, with Black Rose nipped in the bud, I believe I've fulfilled my part of the bargain. Oh. That's true, but with the Archon still slumbering away, we were hoping you might agree to stay with us for a little bit longer. Sorry, but I'm not inclined to extend my contract. Gaius isn't the only one with business to attend to. What if we said please? Please? Thank you for your help then, Estinian. I see why Alphano admires you, sir. Oh. Hmm. 
<laughs> Single grunt. Farewell, my friend. See that you don't make a habit of dozing off in battle. <laughs> I love you, Astinian. Hmm. I suppose we should all be getting on then. As ever, we will see to the Archon's needs. In the meantime, why not get some rest? You've more than earned it. Go on. Tataru and Cry will just <laughs> hunt you down, I think you mean. Must be shattered after all that and hopping back and forth between. Yep. <clears throat> Estinian strikes me a lot like um, Geralt from the Witcher Netflix series, where he just grunts and makes noises and occasionally says fuck. <laughs> Meanwhile, in Garlemald. Is it hard to get into this game? Sort of. If you don't like reading. Traitors, you dare deny Lord Nerva the throne! Oh, ah! Onward! Before this day is done, victory shall be ours! Yeah, they're all fighting for the throne now. There is no heir. Fuck. Boring, boring. Boring. Do you think I find it amusing? Like dogs herding cattle to the slaughterhouse? That you, your soul is... Who are you? Before your majesty, I am but another dog, lost in want of a new master. A hunting dog, if you should wish it so. For I know full well the prey you would seek next. Zodiac. His next prey is Zodiac? Huh? Meanwhile, in Yulmore in the first. I don't remember that part. I guess that is the biggest game. What bigger game to hunt than a primal? The primal. That is incredibly ambitious. Did you hear? The mayor's reopening Daedalus Stoneworks, and they're looking for laborers. They're talking of resetting some of the old abandoned villages, too. They're even laying on free Talos to anyone willing to make the move. Free Talos? Huh. Best get packing. Steady work, board and lodging? That's not a recipe for hope. I don't know what is. Wow, I can't believe Chai News said living wages. Hope. Hardburn? Yes, so long as I yet live, I would see that feeble flame rekindled. It is my destiny to see our dream fulfilled. It's not Ardbird, it says Wayward Warrior. Mm. The plot thickens. 
Victor, my, what a pleasant, pleasant surprise. If you've come to inquire about the Archons, fear not. Master Matoya's treatment has proven effective in stabilizing their corporeal ether. We mustn't grow complacent, however. Potent though these magics may be, they are not without limits. We can only hope they afford us enough time for the Crystal Exarch to complete his work. If only we could go with you to the first and help. Pardon the interruption, but I come bearing urgent news. <gasps> Maxima! Ah, Victor. It has been far too long, my friend. Forgive me, I don't believe we have form been formally introduced. Maxima, former Garlean ambassador. I remain here in Eorzea under the aus uh, auspices of Commander Aldi, offering what counsel I can in uh, hopes of resolving the present conflict with the Empire. Ah, yes, I have heard stories of a defector from a defector from Garlemald, but never mind that. You said you have urgent news. Indeed, as you may have heard, the Imperial capital is in turmoil, and a sizable portion of the Garlean forces have been recalled from the Gimlet Dark. From their numbers so greatly diminished, the main host of the, the Alliance has withdrawn, leaving the Alamegan resistance to keep watch over the border. <clears throat> and it is there we have welcomed a most unexpected visitor who claims that this de-escalation may bel belie growing dangers and unforeseen threats. Commander Aldine has arranged for an impromptu meeting to discuss these revelations. He has also requested a representative of the science attend as well, though it was clear of whom he wished to extend his invitation. It would seem time is of the essence. Well, you'll not be attending this meeting alone. Though I am not well versed in the affairs of city-states as our comrades, I see no reason to burden a single scion with all of this. Besides, you're a silent protagonist, and you cannot speak. Yes, of course. We must make for Alamegan Quarter with all haste. Well, what are you waiting for? Get going, you two. Why Enix gotta make all the NPCs hot? Because they know that it will make them 20% more engaging. <laughs> Delete Xenos' save file. You know, honestly, I'm a little... I'm a little disappointed that he dumped me for this new Zodiac. But it is what I wanted, after all. His new boyfriend, Zodiac. I hope I hope they, they fight uh, well. I hope he satisfies him. I don't know. Those are big shoes to fill. I don't think I could fill them. You know? <laughs> He's only fighting Zod Zodiac to make us jealous. Oh, geez. Oh, look at these people doing the patch quests. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I wonder if this is Endwalker. It would make sense. Ah, there you are. Yeah, I think that's Endwalker, people. Commander Aldean awaits us in the Royal Palace, if you would follow me. Might be working for you, I'm not jealous. <laughs> I say good for him. I hope he has a long, fightful relationship with Zodiac. Hello, Gaius. They're here, Commander. And I, for one, am grateful that they are. Told you've been busy since our paths last crossed at the Gimlet Dark. Not that I understand half of it. When the science spoke of other worlds, I'd struggled to describe what I pictured. Mayhap things would seem clearer were I to hear the tale from your own lips. But I'm afraid the situation will not afford us that luxury. I trust you two require no introduction. We meet again, hero of Eorzea. Giant Balesaurus! Badass! Must we repeat this ridiculous display? I pose no threat to you, though what I come to warn you of very well might. Had he meant to do us harm, I hazard he would have kept to the shadows and brought more than two companions. We need not pretend to be the best of friends, 
But I hope we can put aside our differences for the present. As you are doubtless aware, Sir Istinian and I cooperated to rid the world of Black Rose in your absence. Our journey together took us as far as the Imperial Palace, where we witnessed Emperor Varus meet his death at Xenos's hand. Being the sole witnesses to this crime, and in no position to defend our innocence, we were then forced to flee, each pursuing his own avenue of escape. When we were later reunited, Estinian claimed to have encountered an unfamiliar kind of machina during his flight, but to me his description seemed anything but, and upon further investigation I found that I was right. The Empire is developing a new Ultima weapon. What, that elegant monstrosity, created to vanquish primals? with which you yourself once thought to conquer Eorzea. The same. In my foolishness, I sought to harness its power and became the Asian's pawn in so doing. But you know as well as I how that tale ended. The weapon itself, excavated from beneath this very city, was destroyed ere we could fully unravel its secrets, and that should have been the end of it. But unlikely as it sounds, the Empire's efforts to recreate it have somehow borne fruit, primarily through secret research conducted by the Seventh Imperial Legion, it would seem. Wait, the Seventh was all but annihilated at Cartano, along with its legatus. Nail Van Darnus. Indeed, few survived. The Seventh, as it is now, has little in common with the Legion led by Van Darnus, and its leadership has changed hands several times since. Precisely how this project has continued despite such turmoil, and under whose auspices, remains a mystery. What we do know, however, is that a number of prototypes have been produced, and that one of them is on its way to Eorzea. Mm. We attempted to stop it, but it was all we could do to slow its progress, so we resolved instead to bring you warning. And right glad are we that you did. Though it soundly dashed our hopes that tensions might ease at last. Nail in ye anus! As it is, we've begun to strengthen our presence in the uh. Gimlet Dark, and are assembling a force to meet the coming threat. Before you say anything, I know full well you have pressing concerns of your own. Your comrades remain in peril, and I would not ask you to forsake them. But the fact remains, that you, and you alone, have faced the Ultima Weapon, and emerged victorious. We need you. And this it leads into the, the, uh, different, the weapons, the Ultima Weapons trial series, which and we will so, not be doing, when the time sadly. comes, if your comrades can spare you, I bid you lend us your strength. I've assigned an officer to await your word. I have done them already. The Asian's nice downfall story. was to be the work of my remaining days. But it was my hand that kindled these flames, and I cannot allow them to spread any further. I will do what I must to see this mistake consigned to history once and for all. Even if it means begging your aid. The fates will enjoy the irony, even as I endure the ignominy. I too shall make for the border and offer my skills, meager though they seem in such company. Mayhap we shall meet there anon. Though we can ill afford to ignore the coming of a new Ultima weapon, our friend's plight grows ever more precarious, and none save you can join them in the first. Maxima's voice changed. I assume I this is going to be his permanent voice actor now. Choice. I think it changed like towards the end of the pa the post Stormblood patches. When he was first voiced, he had a different voice, but only for like one or two cutscenes. I'm pretty sure.
but... As, pre, assuming he is going to be a regular character in Endwalker, I assume this is going to be his permanent voice from now on. Cryo? As ever, the way forward is paved with difficult decisions and people watching cutscenes. We can ill afford to ignore the threat of the new Ultima weapon. With each passing day, the plight of the Scions grows ever more perilous. If you cannot stay for a debriefing on the Ultima weapon, I will not stop you. I only ask that you confer with me before returning to the first. I take it you're ready to return to the first? Then I would ask that you reprise the others. Yep. Yeah, so this will lead into the, the uh, weapon storyline. So they're a big, uh, big Final Fantasy VII fan service there. And yeah, I assume people are either doing the heaven, the, uh, sorry, the, um, Shadowbringers post-patch quests there, like the 5.4, 5.5, because you do come back for that. But, um, or something with Endwalker, either one. I'm sad about the change on Sid's voice during these patches. Did, did he? Did he change voices? Huh. I don't think I would have noticed. Voice actor must have did a very good job. Hello, Graha. You've come at m a most opportune time, my friend. I've made something of a breakthrough in my research on the soul and a means to return the Scions home. I trust you too have been making good use of your time. Ill tidings from the source, you say? Then I will summon the others that we might all be appraised of the situation. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna conveniently leave out the whole Ultima weapon thing. I, I think hearing about Xenos is enough baggage as it is. It's a lot to take in. Now that we are all here, what news from the source? So, uh, Gaius and Astinian are super badass and teamed up, and then they found Xenos, who happened to stab... A new Ultima weapon? Ah, shit. We must count ourselves lucky that Gaius has pledged his assistance. While this is indeed a worrying development, I think the state of the Empire as a whole greater grounds for concern. With the Emperor slain and Xenos returned, it is impossible to predict how matters will unfold in Garlemald. The Ultima weapon may be but the first of many unpleasant surprises. Yeah, okay. <laughs> they, even they acknowledge it's like, that's just, that's just a side story. The situation beareth closer observation. Of that there is no doubt. And doth compound our need to return unto the source. Then let us address that issue. Our long search for a means to see you safely home may well be nearing its conclusion. Thanks in large part to Urianje and Beklug's invaluable insight, we have succeeded in fashioning a vessel for the journey. Oh! We set out to create a crystalline container retaining the more useful properties of white orosite, but without its regrettable limitations. And after a good deal of trial and error, we made one. Nice. An arc for soul and mind both that will allow your incorporeal self in its entirety to be ferried between worlds. A spirit vessel, if you will. Yeah, it looks much more streamlined. It's like a USB stick. However. However? Though the vessel is possessed of the requisite qualities to hold mind and memory, it wanteth yet for a means to receive of them. For that, we must needs imbue it with the Exarch's innate gift. Ah, you need to make a plug. A gift that lives on only through the blood of the Allegan Emperors. 
which certainly does not flow within Aurasite or any other crystal. All right. <sighs> Somebody get the needle. Just so, milady. The blood serveth as a conduit of sorts. In its absence, memory cannot pass from mind unto mind, nor from flesh unto crystal. That being the case, we must either alter the process of inheritance so as to require no such thing, or determine a means by which my blood may permeate the vessel. I am hopeful that the records found within this tower will yield the knowledge we require to pursue one or the other of these avenues. As well you should be. The Allegan's body of etherological research is extraordinary. I can scarce believe it the work of ages past. But its underlying principles are not so very different from those of my own field of study. Given time, we will find the answers we seek. Yeah, no sacrificing yourself th this time, Graha. I know that you can ill afford to wait, and it pains me that I must ask you to do so. I can only reaffirm my promise to you that a solution will be found. You know, if you die, Alize is going to give you an earful. Whatever it takes, I will see you safely home. My apologies. I do hope you haven't come to tell us that mortal peril fast approaches. <laughs> no. Mortal peril I fast approaches, to speak my lord. With the warrior of darkness. Oh. But there is no need to cut short your meeting on my account. I will be waiting outside. I'm sorry, my lord, but mortal peril approaches. Why not speak in here? She knows I don't mind. Unless she didn't want to. Oh, oh. Perhaps I might accompany you. Though I am woefully ill-qualified to assist in the Exarch's research, I may yet be of some use to Lena. Fucking Exarch is precious. <laughs> All right. Hello, Alphano. Seeking counsel. I must confess, while I enjoy my fair share of scholarly research, it will be good to step outside for a spot of fresh air. Now then, shall we go and speak with Lena? I love how Graha is a 20-year-old with sad dad feelings. He is not a 20-year-old. At least this Graha. This Graha is like 120. At least. Just hit my second hour in queue. F. We have little time, so I will be brief. A Sin Eater has been sighted in Lakeland, and I would ask your assistance in slaying it. Sin Eater? A Sin Eater? I'd heard some few yet remain after the night had returned, but perhaps we should call the others. That will not be necessary. It is only a single Sin Eater. A simple task for our guard, I should think. That said, I believe fighting alongside the Warrior of Darkness will be a valuable experience for them. Peace can lend to complacency, and they gain nothing from an easy victory. But you do not understand your foes, however harmless they may seem. My men, uh... But you do not underestimate your foes, however harmless they may seem. My men would do well to learn from your example. Oh, <laughs> let us be about it then, hero. That's what Ardbert said to us. Excellent. Let us make for Fort Job. Even though it's not a phrase, you know, that's attributed to him. Maybe I'm reading too far into things, but I like to think that we're drawing upon Ardbert to say that. Alright, real quick, I'm gonna test an overlay because you, you guys remember how I tried to do the smile better suits a hero and it kind of stuttered and I don't want this next overlay to have that problem. So real quick, I'm gonna mute my audio and uh, test them out real quick. Not that one. Uh, boop. And pardon, 
the silence. It's just so I can try it out. Uh, one second. Where is it? The sound of silence. Whoops, that's not supposed to be there. Oh well, uh, you guys didn't see anything. It's fine. Um, okay. Please look away respectfully. God, I have so many dang overlays. Please look away respectfully. Uh, don't mind that. Just dragging that over there so you guys can't see it. I will be able to listen. If it's stuttering. Yep, it's not stuttering, so that's good. It's testing out another one. Da 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 da. What's the other one? Just make sure. Ba -ba -da -ba -da. Da -da 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 -da. Just moving that over there. You guys can't see anything. Okay. That's not stuttering either. Okay, good. All seems well. Sorry about that. Just fixing some de technical difficulties for uh, the sake of the stream experience. If you would wait here a moment, I will gather the others. <laughs> yeah, you can look again. You can return. You may bring your prying eyes. You may not remember, but you have met these soldiers once before, though only in passing. Long have they awaited the opportunity to fight at your side. I was at death's door the day after the Sin Eater attack. If you and yours hadn't come along, I have likely stepped through, and I would have been, uh, and I wouldn't have been alone. Your courage and selflessness is something we all aspire to. I too was there that terrible day. My friend was transformed into a Sin Eater before my very eyes, and I had no choice but to cut her down. The thought of returning to the field, of holding a blade again, it fills me with dread. But that is in no way to honor her or my comrades, and so I have returned. I swear I will not let you or anyone else down from this day forward. A pleasure to meet you, sir. Truly. It seems the only that only yesterday I watched you took flight astride in a morrow to go and save the Oracle. Strange to think that you Moran soldiers once locked blades with are now at our side, but we will do our utmost to keep the peace here in Lakeland. We seem to be missing one. Oh, oh, it's this guy. My apologies, Captain Lena. An elderly gentleman asked that I escort him to clear Clearmount. It took longer than I anticipated. I'll not begrudge your desire to help those in need, but a soldier must be punctual, especially when we play host to honored guests. It won't happen again. The name's uh, Thaler. I'm sure you don't remember, but we met once before in the infirmary. Yeah, you were telling me to tell the Exarch that you believed. I asked you to deliver a message to the Exarch and the warriors, uh, the Warrior of Darkness. Little did I know, I was already talking to him. Don't give up. Don't give in. I keep those words close to my heart, and the boundless, beautiful skies above serve as a reminder of their importance. My friend got to see the knights return shortly before he passed. He left this world with a smile, satisfied with a glimpse of what had what, what was to come. But there are countless others who weren't so fortunate. They gave their lives for the promise of a future they'll never know, and so it falls to us to do everything we can to fulfill that promise. No matter what happens, we won't give up. We won't give in. Your heroism has inspired all of the guardsmen in much the same manner. 
our scouts in the northern staging point have not had the pleasure of meeting you in person. Let us not keep them waiting. You're in? Nice! Congratulations! Way to go. Enjoy Endwalker, or whatever it is that you're doing. Enjoy playing a video game that you paid for. Good luck to anybody else still waiting in queue. This is a black void. Okay. Time to figure out your new rotation. Oh, yeah. I already didn't know how to play Summoner. Now I especially don't know how to play Summoner. Did I check out the new style of 80 plus gear on the mark board? I did not. I, I don't want to be spoiled on that. That's content spoilers, and I want to avoid did those. Did you play this eater? Your orders were to await the main force before engaging. No, Captain. It wasn't us, I swear it. A man came out of nowhere and cut it down before we knew what was happening. Hmm. By himself. Certainly it is no light warden, but nevertheless. It's true. Felled it with a single swing of his axe he did. I've never seen anything like it. His axe, you say? So I says to him, who are you, the warrior of bleeding darkness? And he says, no. I'm a warrior of light. And that was it. Buggered off as quick as he came. Hmm. A warrior of light? Why would someone go around calling himself that, though? It was those yep. bastards spoilers, who caused Eric. the Go flood. away. Go away, Eric. This is spoilers. You finish ARR. You go play ARR, you, you nerd. Go, go do your gathering and crafting. Go fish your fish. Love you. I mean, if you were going to pretend to be anyone, it'd be him, the Warrior of Darkness. Hey? Oh, oh, I didn't know. It's an honor. <laughs> Since the Eater is no longer a threat, our work here is done. Return to your posts. Hmm. Okay. I had hoped to fight at your side today. But I'll continue to follow your example. And may we meet again. I apologize for the wasted journey. It seems I overestimated the threat. Oh, don't worry. I'm sure it's foreshadowing for something As else. As for this warrior of light... I do not know who would be brazen enough to take that mantle for his own. Whatever it may once have meant, it is forever tainted by the association with the Flood. The Exarch told me the truth of Ardbert and his comrades' deeds, and I am aware they played some part in your own triumph. But to most, they are synonymous with the calamity that befell this world. Is it me or does the audio sound muddier than before the patch in-game? I, I notice the sound effects are definitely quieter, and that's not just because I have sound effects low. They were legitimately very quiet. Still, if this man is minded to destroy Sin Eaters, I may forgive him his unfortunate choice of alias. But that is neither here nor there. I thank you for accompanying me. Yeah, imagine if you called yourself the Warriors of Hitler. <laughs> With that concluded, shall we return to the Crystarium? There is a proposal I should like to make. Forgive me. There is one more thing. A personal concern of mine. I had hoped you might have a moment to speak privately. Some people do. Yeah, no, but I imagine, like, imagine someone who was, like, brought food to homeless people and, like, charity and, like, was anti-racism and, like, fought for civil rights, but then they called themselves the Warriors of Hitler. <laughs> The Grand Hitler Association. <laughs> it would be like, you're kind of counterintuitive to your cause there, buddy. I go on ahead. It, it Maybe a, a better, more suitable name. <laughs> I will
will not mince words. This matter concerns the Exarch. Oh? Though his countenance belies his age, his demeanor never has. He has seen more than any man should and grown ever more weary with time. But I see I give the wrong impression. While it is true he attempted to open a letter with the Salmon Filet the other evening, we are not here because I suspect his mind is deteriorating. <laughs> Nor do I believe him to be so maddeningly unconcerned by the prospect of his own death as he once was. Indeed, the opposite is true. The fascists of justice, there we go. It is for this reason that I seek your advice. Since he returned from the Tempest, the Exarch is not as he was. He seems a different man, a younger man. I know not the details of his research, but when I saw him at work recently, there was a glint in his eye that I had never seen before. He looked... happy. Aww. It was as if he had peered into the future and for the first time... found joy there. He's excited that he might be able to go on an adventure with us after this. Though it gladdens me to see him thus, I wonder if I should not keep my distance. I fear that my presence will only anchor him to the past. Remind him of all the pain that came before. Oh. Mm, anchors keep us where we have chosen to be. Yeah. The anchors let us know how far we've come. You were part of his journey. Is that so? Then perhaps we might remain as we were. As we have always been. What a relief. In that case, I will have to speak with him about the amount of time he is spending at work. <laughs> This research is important, I know, but if he refuses to consider his own health, I will have to consider it for him. I ship them? I d there are more grandpa, granddaughter figures. I, I family ship them. Facing the truth. I will not keep you. You and your comrades have much to discuss. I will see the others back to their posts. Platonic ship, yeah. I don't know. They're, they're too much, like, because, uh... Exarch found her when she was a little girl and basically raised her, so I can't really ship them as anything else other than parental and child figures to each other. I tried to click on the, on the map. Fifteen hundred Q to get into Brynhildr, yeesh. I wouldn't say he's thousands. Actually, he might be. We don't know how long Graha was in the tower before it was finally opened by uh, the Garland's, uh, Garland Ironworks. So, yeah, he could have been in there for hundreds or thousands of years before there, uh, the tower was opened. At least 200, yeah, something like that. Okay, okay, so it has been confirmed, all right. The others were quick, uh, quite shocked to hear uh, what we found in Lakeland. But now that you're here, there is a proposal I should like to make. I have been spending a great deal of time in the Cabinet of Curiosity, and of late I have noted more and more people pursuing the books on history, the years leading up to the Flood in particular. I suspect they wish to know more about the Warriors of Light. As well, they should, but nearly everything I've come across describes them as Sin Eaters or worse. 
Regardless of whether or not this warrior of light is who they claim to be, I worry that their sudden appearance, in conjunction with this renewed interest in their pre uh, predecessors, may lead to growing unrest and fear. If the people of the Crystarium seek the truth, I say we give it to them. I too can attest to the falsehood found within full many of the cabinet's tomes, with nary a mention of the noble deeds of Artbert and his comrades. Ah, uh, they should do the roll quest then. To be fair, they bear some responsibility for the flood, but when the tale is told again and again over the course of a century, I am not surprised to see their roles distorted and them painted as villains. Were it not for the records stored within the Crystal Tower, I would have had no reason to question the narrative. Unfortunately, that knowledge was of no use, for when I arrived here in the first, their reputation had already been irreparably tarnished. That said, there is still remains those who worked tirelessly to defend their good name in those early days following the Flood. Consider all the good they had done. I find it a wonder they lay the defending at all. They brought to justice the man who misused my knowledge to bring about the fall of Verbert. That such heroes could be spoken of in the same breath as Sin Eaters is absurd. Under normal circumstances, I would agree, but as time passed, those who knew firsthand their deeds dwindled. In the end, only one truth remained, that they were the cause of the Flood. With the world on the brink of oblivion, it was all too easy for the Warriors of Light to become villains deserving only the resentment uh, of resentment and hate. At that point, the truth mattered little. It would not change their lot. Thanks to all of you, however, the lot has changed, and now they may need the long-forgotten truth. N may heed. You claimed it was Ardbert who helped you overcome Emmett Selk, correct? Such a revelation would do well to sway the hearts of those who would know him only as villain. I have shared this with a select few, but one and all must be told of his sacrifice. To that end, I say we proceed with Alphino's plan. We call together the people of the Crystarium and recount all of them, uh, recount to them the true tale of the Warriors of Light and the Flood that followed in their wake. All right, we're going to tell them the truth. Oh, whoops. Well, what say you, Victor? This whole time the chat was still on. <laughs> I wish we had done it sooner. In hindsight, I agree, but better late than never, no. Exarch, might I ask you to continue working with Beck Lug on our means of returning home? The rest of us will see to gathering the people of the Crystarium in the Exedra. We have to reach out to anyone and everyone who might be willing to lend an ear. With any luck, word will spread and more will accompany them. Here we go. Exarch, what do you think? There can be no darkness without light, and so it was that Ardbert was there in your hour of need. The people must be told. Speak with the people of the Crystarium. There's a lobby error? Oh no! Oh. Jeez, lots of problems happening right now. I reach out for the truth and then I Grandma! Oh, jeez, I saw her and I gasped because I was too excited. Victor! My, what a wonderful surprise. Though I hope your being here doesn't mean someone's been hurt, unless I am there to watch you stomp them beneath your feet. Thanks to you, I've had far fewer patients coming through my door of late, which is a shame, come to think of it. I crave blood. <laughs> I jest, of course, unless. It's also been quite pleasant to have few moments to myself every now and again. 
the truth about the Warriors of Light. But the Exarch has already spoken to me about them. Well, if there's more to tale, uh, more to the tale, I very much would like to hear it. Oh, Grandma. You and your insatiable bloodlust. Did they also say they implemented the option to log in on a different server in your data center? IDK, how that works, though. So basically, you go to the Crystarium. Oh, oh, from the, from the menu. Yeah, I don't know how to do that from the menu. I've never tried it. Don't pick Balmung or Brynhildr. Yeah, those are probably the most populated. <laughs> or Malboro. <laughs> Malboro, Brynhildr, and Balmung are really populated. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna skip these. I've had a 50-person queue on Malboro all day. It's dead. <laughs> oh, jeez. Is it this way? This, this. Oh, it's underneath. I see. Cabinet of Curiosity. <laughs> Goblin was pretty sparse. Yeah. And I think Zeriel is that the other one that's called? I'm pretty sure that one's not very populated. Oh, Victor, forgive me. The Cabinet of Curiosity has been bustling with visitors of late. People wish to know the truth about the Flood and the Warriors of Light. I've searched high and low, but alas, every account of them is no better than Sin Eaters. I know they were not always judged so harshly, yet I can find no proof, and I dare call myself a librarian. Well, I'm about to tell you the truth. If you can gather some people, you would address the people? Hell yeah! All right, let's see. Where next? Um, Markets. Essie <laughs> gave priority to non Endwalker ready characters. You mean you gave priority to Endwalker ready characters, not non. <laughs> That's false. They gave priority to subbed players. I see. Yeah. <laughs> Come to browse the wares. Come to tell you about the Warriors of Light. <laughs> yeah. So if you're if you're a free to play player, you might. But if you're not and you still have long queues, then I don't know. Computers are strange. Servers are strange. There are works of magic, honestly, and. Uh, Nobody truly understands how they are. Warriors of Light. Come and hear about it. Okay. Docile Gates. All right, Alphano, I'm ready for it to magically turn to daytime. There you are. Between the four of us, I dare say we've swept the Crystarium from top to bottom. Now we need but wait for the people to gather. Yes, this looks to be nearly everyone. Let us begin, shall we? Though I am usually the first to hold forth at such events, I think on this occasion that honour should fall to you. They would be more inclined to take the word of the Warrior of Darkness. Indeed. In light of the subject matter, who better than thee to speak these truths?
people of the Crystarium, I pray you listen, for you must hear this truth. The Warriors of Light were not the villains you believed them to be. Though they unknowingly caused the Flood of Light, t'was they who also halted it. They had been manipulated by a great evil that they would bring the Flood unto the realm. And for this, they did everything in their power to atone for their mistake and save all from its destruction, including giving their lives. And when that wasn't enough, they gave their souls. Together with their leader, Ardbert, was I aided in vanquishing the Light Wardens, returning the night sky to Nordrend. Wicked White? The Warriors of Light did all that? So they never... I mean, they only ever wanted to help. And when everything they'd done turned to ash, they still carried on. They gave everything to stop the Flood. First their lives, then their souls. And they managed it too. In the end, they saved us. And we cursed their names. This should go a long way towards clearing the air. I take it I'm not imagining this, then. I definitely see something. You don't think it's a ghost, do you? Nay. Yonder standeth no bloodless apparition, but a warrior of light and darkness both. Ardbert. What in the world? It's you! The one who slew the Eater! That it should be the Warrior of Darkness who brought the truth to light. You've saved me a fair bit of time. Though I have a few words of my own to say, if I may. People of the Crystarium! I am Ardbert. One of those you know as a warrior of light. That's impossible. You should be dead. Aye, that I should. But as the world has been given you life, so too have I. I know not why I and I alone have been gifted this chance. But I do know this. Only by the will of the star itself could such a miracle come to pass. The hero who stands before you now, the warrior of darkness, is not of this world. And the day will come when he must return to his home. But this land is our home. And if it is to remain so, now and forevermore, it is we who must protect it. The time to rely on saviors from afar has passed. It is you who must rise. You who must become the new warriors of light. What? Us? Warriors of light? None of us were born heroes, my friend. I was only ever a man with a thirst for adventure. But wherever my journeys took me, I was invariably confronted with the same choice. To lend what aid I could to those in need, or not. And I always chose the former. Any one of you could do the same. All you need is the will to help your fellow man. 
and the resolve to see it through. From thine own lips did we learn of Ardbert's fate, and by thy countenance I gather thou art not inclined to recant thy testimony. Yet whosoever this man may be, his words hold truth and resonate with the citizenry besides. For us to voice our doubts here and now would serve but to sow disquiet. Twere better we retired unto the ocular and there discuss this matter in private. Go, I will stay here and watch. I am muted. Sorry about that. I was muted because I wanted that uh, that cutscene to play without my interference and uh, let the Warrior of Light speak his own mind. Hope you guys en enjoyed that, by the way. <laughs> I liked uh, coming up with the words and stuff. That was inspired by another post, uh, a video, where someone hired a voice actor to the voice their Warrior of Light as a black mage and also as a white mage. You did well to disperse the falsehood surrounding the Warriors of Light and their actions prior to the Flood, though I must say the reappearance of Ardbert, or rather, one who appropriated his identity, was a rather curious development. He is an imposter, and of that there is no doubt, but on the masses he will appear as a hero returned from the grave. After the Warriors of Light were laid to rest in Yulbor, the people prayed fervently to the gods to deliver them from their plight. Pray that these fallen heroes be born again for their sacrifice. What bitter irony. I, for one, would like to know why Ardbert urged the people to become warriors of light themselves. Ere we take action, we must needs ascertain his intent. Let us pray that Master Alphino return us soon with the most essential knowledge. For now, I think it best to apprise Thancred and Reen of our efforts. When we do confront Ardbert, we shall no doubt have need of his str of their strength. Agreed. I think it prudent we all take measure to prepare what for what's to come. Becklug and I will continue our search into how we might improve the spirit vessel, that it might one day carry you home. What's you thinking, Nishtola? Hmm. Then I think at time I return to the Great Wood. Until now, everything we have learned of the Asians had been handed to us at their leisure. But that was one of Emmet Selk's unique failings. I have no reason to think Elidibus will be as forthcoming. Fortunately, I have received I have recently received word from Fano that heretofore un, unexplored chambers have been discovered deep within the Katana Revel. Almet believes the relics within tell of a great calamity that befell an ancient civilization, that of the Asians, perhaps. They may lead us to the truths we seek. Hmm. Would you care for the company? I wouldn't dream of going without you. When you are ready, make for Fano. Almed and her sisters will be expecting us. <laughs> Girls, and let us be about our tasks. Pray give my regards to the Vis. <laughs> I'm not going to say hi to Runar. No, Runar's doing fine. Hmm, 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 hmm. Women. <laughs> Sad, I don't have the women button anymore. Bow, 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 bow. 
Hello's. Bum, 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 bum. <coughs> Hello, girls, ladies, women. Welcome to uh, welcome, allies of Ronka. We have accomplished much since you last came. With the warden, with the light warden den and its minions dispersed, we have at last reclaimed our hunting grounds near Raktika Great uh, Raktika's Falls. It was there that we discovered more ruins. Although we ran afoul of no traps while exploring its halls, we determined that the innermost chambers were warded by magic. We all were in agreement. Before any investigation could proceed, you should be summoned. We are grateful that you did. From what we are, you have told me, I strongly suspect that the wisdom of my comrades and I seek can be found within. The wisdom could prove invaluable, for we may soon face a foe whose greatest asset is our ignorance. I see, then it is good that you have come, for Ronka was once home to the greatest of weapons, knowledge and understanding. And it is my duty to ensure you and yours do not want for either. That said, we must proceed with caution. To have reached the inner chambers of the, uh, the, the inner chambers unmolested suggests a more formidable deterrent yet lies within. Come now, surely any threat sleeping within the ruins pale in comparison to those we have faced thus far. This is not a game, sister. You should not be so eager to run headlong into danger. Oh, and who was it pining for the return of our allies that we might venture into the ruins, clutching her staff at night, wishing it were... <gasps> you promise not to tell! Then I suggest we be going. <laughs> I love her. She's my favorite. Get back here! Remind me, exactly how old are you and your sisters? I would also like to know. <laughs> On second thought, perhaps it's better that I do not know. I would like to know. Pray forgive their overzealous nature. None of them, uh, none save we three have been privileged to escort you and yours into the ruins to bear witness to its secrets. Their hearts now burn with a curiosity that is not easily satiated. They're all like hundreds of years old. Nice. Means they're very experienced. Please, you needn't apologize. As a seeker of knowledge myself, I understand full well their enthusiasm. And if not for your uh, sedulous efforts to protect the ruins, we would not be afforded this opportunity. Speaking of which, I b believe I have kept you away from the ruins long enough. Come, let us make for the katana ravel. Stop honking! It's all just innocent teasing. Innocent, playful, edging teasing. Instance, okay. Danger awaits us. Oh, lots of cutscene time, okay. <clears throat> Is this the final quest of 5.2? No, no, it's not. Come. Our new discoveries are to be found this way. Ah, shit, I don't have my cum button anymore. I removed it. Hold on, hold on. I need to add in the cum button. There we go. I'm going to put that on a hotkey later.
The people of Ronka are known to have venerated animals, but these features do not match those of any indigenous species. This is no common beast. Though that much is plain from its proportions. Lifelike, is it not? One could almost imagine it breathed. <laughs> Why you Ugh. best sister? This owl, by contrast, seems no different from the others we've seen. The sealed door lies ahead. All right, I just assigned some hotkeys. I'm just going to test them out. All right, that works. All right, that works. Awesome. <laughs> As you see, one statue is missing. I expect we are meant to replace it as before. Water? Water and water? Too simple. There will be some additional defense mechanism. Is it water time? Just a moment. There are... He who would disturb a hero's deserved slumber shall instead waken the beast and know his folly. Wait! Don't! Oh, shit. What? But I only... What is happening? Oh shit, oh no. Oh no! Oh no! Oh, oh shit, no. it's water! Oh, no. Water and water and water and water and water and water and water Why am I not surprised? Prepare yourselves. All right, no water today. Hmm. <laughs> oh no, you've turned you've been turned into a gacha pool. No wonder I don't remember this part. This is just all filler, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, I don't I don't remember what even happened in this part and now I know why it was filler. I mean, it's nice that we get more chance to interact with the characters, but yeah, this is all inconsequential, isn't it? You trespass mortal upon sacred ground. In retribution your souls have I bound. Yet to heroes proven, learned and wise, a comrade's soul shall be their prize. If you would see, there's set free. Answer me, these riddles three. <laughs> Deft of paw, what kin do I vie? Though sought apart, bitterment of the whole do our escorts decry. What am I? Deft of paw, with kin do I pry. Though sought apart, bitterment of the whole do efforts scry. Hmm. No answers, chat. Sought apart, betterment of the whole. 
to our efforts to scry. I was gonna say wolf, but there is no wolf here. So I think it's curl? <clears throat> nope! Twas the Opo Opo! Korean intrude, its spirit exalts ingenuity. Hmm. Oh shit! Oh no! For this mistake, a single talisman I shall take. <gasps> okay, I hope she's not gone forever. With fearsome fang, I travel with a pack. Together we find harmony, and thus for peaceful land do we lack. What am I? This has got to be a wolf. Wolf statue. Indeed, twas the spirit of the wolf their uh, doctrines praised, that they would know peace and harmony to the end of their days. The riddles answered you did discern, and thus you, to you a soul returned. Oh, thank God. On my belly do I crawl, by my strength does prosperity reign within our hall. What am I? Serpent? Scree! The dreadful serpent turned protector, lured to slumber, ere it tear the world asunder. The riddles answered you discern, thus to you a soul return. Where's best sister? I lost best sister. Desire you that which I claim, then we shall play another game. A test of mind and memory, choose wise and you all may yet go free. Twixt these talismans hide friend and foe, choose your companions well or sorrow no. Mm, shit ass, it's a memory game. All right. Okay. Okay, you stole us there and it's there. Okay, awesome. Nah. Oh, thank God. That is not Ishtola. That is not Ishtola. That's not Ishtola either. If I just pick Ishtola again, I won't have to fight. Yeah, there we go. All right. So this one's Ishtola, right next to her. Great. That was Iguana. <laughs> Comrades are assembled together at last. Yet still remains one trial, one, one trial you must pass. If you would glean the knowledge ensh enshrined to this earth, I would first take the measure of your worth. <laughs> One worthy of she who the Ronkins extolled must be strong of mind, body, and soul. That doesn't rhyme. Fuck you, that didn't rhyme! No medicine! Ugh, all good. Prophecies rhyme, and yours didn't. Now we must kill you. That thing has boobs. Oh yeah, it does. You bet your sweet bippy. Oh, it's nice to know I'm not losing uptime with blood splitter when I leave the area. Bump. Bum, 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 bum. Here I come. Help me, girls. Please. Thank you. Finally. Surrounded by beautiful women. This game truly knows what I want. Surrounded and protected by four tall women. And before you ask, I do think Ishtola is taller than me. I'm not sure, but I think so. 
I think she is. She's not? Okay, maybe she's not. All right, well, three assertive women then. <laughs> Poison. I like to think she is. She's taller than me in spirit, you know? She has the energy of a taller woman. This is going to leave a mark. Yeah, I believe you. Is, um... I guess I would have to be min-height male Makote. It would seem the magics have returned us. How polite. Now, what have we learned? Ah, we were bound to run into a living statue eventually. And now we can open the door. <laughs> oh my god. You stole us like, oh my god, you idiot. And what have we learned? Absolutely nothing. He who would disturb a hero's deserved slumber. A tomb, just as I thought, befitting a hero. Oh, the Ronkin Empire buried the warriors of light. She is Vis. Could that be the Archmage Tiuna? A legendary hero of Ronka. Never mind. As you Not said, Arthur. The tales tell of how she smote entire armies with a single incantation, so potent was her spellcraft. Though she ever fought in the name of peace. I thought them no more than tales. To think she really existed. Well, I for one always believed. By the light of fallen stars, great power awakens. Tuna was not only a master of spellcraft. It is said she could see truths long lost and hear the voices of men's hearts. Not less than the echo, in which case... None of this is mere coincidence. Oh. An echo bearer of the first. A shower of stars setting the sky aflame. And in both this world and the source, we find individuals within whom a mysterious power awakened at the sight. A shower of stars setting the sky aflame. That's a scene we saw back in A Realm Reborn. All... Ardbird and the others had the echo? That is true. That is true. I forgot about that. They were all Hydaelyn's chosen as well. We saw, yeah, there was a, there was a cutscene way, way back in A Realm Reborn of us seeing the sky set aflame. We can never unpick the why of it. Now, however, I believe we might. Does the scene depicted here 
not resemble the one we saw when we first ventured into the Katana Ravel. Moreover, does it not recall that which Emmett Selk invited us to witness in Amarot? In the final days. The final days. If, as the Exarch's research suggests, soul and mind share a fragile yet profound bond, might it not be possible for an event to leave such a deep imprint upon the soul that it could be perceived eons later, given a suitable trigger? So, this Tiuna must have had the soul of one of these sundered Asians, that she was able to remember the final days. As do we. But which Asian? The echo defies explanation by conventional etherological theory. Or shall we say modern etherological theory? But if it is a power that once belonged to the ancients, to souls yet undivided. I wouldn't say my soul's undivided, but it has been rejoined several oh. times. It would seem I have entered the realm of pure speculation, and I call myself a scholar. I shall refrain from making any further wild claims until such time as I have evidence. Technically, everyone is a re uh, reincarnation of the Asians. Yeah, that is true. Everyone is, in a way, a sundered Asian, but some more than others, I would say. Still, I cannot choose but be reminded of our experience in Amarot. Because sometimes, you know, new, bor new souls are definitely born. Uh, born. Born. Because I'm sure over time there would be more souls created than there were souls reincarnated, you know? At some point. Hmm. Then you must recall Emmett Selk's dying request. Remember us. History is learned, not lived. We have always protected the tales of Ronka, just as we have protected this place. But we are mindful of what our mothers taught us. Could the souls be recycled into the different worlds? Yes, as we have seen that there are, we have seen actual reflections in the first that are like basically sunders of and mirrors of people in the source. Like uh, the the artifact gear guy, for example, and Rowena we has Moen. And speak of it with our own words. Thus do we come to understand it in our own way. And Ardbert was our sundered piece. As, remembering. as uh, our soul apparently looked very much like his. Your mothers were wise. Though we witnessed the final days, our impressions could not fail to be colored by our own experiences and expectations. Those who lived through it would have perceived the event quite differently. We must bear in mind that it is no simple matter to keep the truth alive, or it will die with Emmett Selk and his kin. But we have disturbed you not long enough. Fana will serve similarly well as a venue for our contemplations. Good old Grenolt. <laughs> oh, Grenolt. I'm going to be right back. I got to use the bathroom and load up on some snacks. Be right back, chat.
like that. Chips. Produce. Salsa. Or possibly uh, some other races existed alongside the Asians. That's speculation. Yep. We don't really know fully what uh, happened in the before times. Your pensive expression, I take as a tomb, has given you much to think about. Before you leave, however, I would speak again the teachings of our forebears. Our histories learned, not lived. Legend of Tiuna and her exploits have been told countless times over the centuries. Yet as it is handed from one generation to the next, the story changes. With each telling of the tale, there are new flourishes. Details changed or lost. We can never truly know how she lived, or uh, for we were not there to see it. But we are here now to bear witness to your life. We have seen the change you had wrought, the echoes that will endure long after you are gone. And though it too will change in time, I swear to you, we shall do our best to preserve your story. I hope you'll forgive me if I uh, don't make an oath of my own, but I think it goes without saying we could never misspeak of your heroism. Perish the thought. So long as we are here, we are none among the Vis. Uh, there are none among the Vis who will not know of all of all you have done for Nordfrand. We are not deserving such rever reverence, but we are grateful all the same. We can be certain that we will have all our own tales to tell of the great guardians of Raktika and the ruins of Romka. I pray your safe travels, then, as ever we shall await your return with the open arms. Nice. An old friend. Did we learned all of naught of the Asians. Uh, the insight we gained to the Echo made our trip worthwhile. Turn the Crystarium. Yep. Hey, look, it's Lucron. Look at there. <laughs> Lucron. Back to Slitherbow. VR preserving stories make sense because they can live, what, 400 to 500 years? Yeah, yeah something like that. 300, 400 years. Runar. Victor. It is good to see you. You arrive at the most opportune time. I was preparing a pot of my famous stew. Come, I will ready a place for you. I'm sorry, Runa, but we haven't the... Please, I insist. It will only take a minute. No. My apologies, Victor. It seems our return to the Crystarium will be delayed. But perhaps only for a bit, if you assist me with my work. I say work, but it is rather more of a chore. I must clean my chambers here in Slitherbow from top to bottom. If you'd be so kind as to go and fetch your, fetch your broom. <laughs> be gone! Ah. Wait, hold on. Ah. Runar is the sweetest. Broom from Master Matoya. <laughs> that is not the room. Excuse me, that is not a Gura reference. That is a reference to the great 14 content creator Lucron. If anything, it's a reference to Sesame Street because Sesame Street invented the letter A. Show us your magic, Master Matoya. You honestly... You didn't honestly think I'd do it the old-fashioned way. 
That broom is more than capable of sweeping by itself. Or rather, it will be. <clears throat> Time to rise, to swish and sweep. A tidy chamber you must keep. To this task you shall be bound, until no dust is to be found. <laughs> sweep, sweep, sweep. In this one particular respect, I have no objections to following ma in Master Matoya's footsteps. In future, I may need you to remind me the pursuit of knowledge does not preclude other equally op important duties, such as maintaining clean quarters for said pursuits. <sighs> I would dearly miss this place, these people. Master Matoya, pardon the interruption, but the stew is ready. We don't deserve Runar. Is something troubling you? You've been rather quiet. No, everything is fine, I assure you. It has been a long day, is all. I see. Ishtola, thank goodness you're still here. Oh, hey, what's up? <clears throat> Alphano, I thought you were following Ardbert. I was, though I am sad to say I lost track of him shortly after entering the woods. He seems determined to traverse every ilm of Norvran in his quest to spread the truth of the Warriors of Light and the Flood. And it seems news of your address at the Crystarium precedes him at every destination, making his task all the more simple. It remains to be seen to what end he encourages the people to become warriors of light themselves. But there is no denying that his works have struck a chord with many. Well, we all agree that this is just another Asian ploy, yes? They've commandeered corpses before, and to no good end. I see no reason to think this time is any different, especially when it's that of a fallen warrior of light. I doubt we'll learn more if we remain on, uh, remain a step behind. His next destination in all likelihood is Slitherbo. Alize, are you certain you should be here? If you're concerned about Halric and the others, you needn't be. The treatment is going well, but progress is slow and exhausting for all of us. The best thing I can do now is let them rest. So, I believe we were able to we were to discuss about to discuss how to arrange a meeting with our would-be warrior of light. Before visiting any towns or villages, Ardbert would hunt down and slay a nearby sin eater to earn the locals' trust. Our best chance of getting ahead of him is to find one before he does. Thankfully, Thancred and Reen are returned from the empty and have taken up the search. Reen believeth one may lurk beneath the bows of woven oath. Then it is there, then that is where we shall start our search. Uh, Master Matoya! Uh, 
I, uh, a warm bowl of stew will be waiting for your return. I look forward to it. Oh, Runar! Ah. What a what a bean. What a sweet bean. Thankward, nice job. If you were hoping to vent your frustrations on our Ether friend here, I can only apologize. Few as they are now, it took us no time at all to track it down. That suits our purpose perfectly. Now we need only wait for Ardbert to arrive. Weren't you two meant to be attending to the empty? We were, and are, but we can hardly ignore the rest of the world, so we thought we might see how things were coming along. From what we can gather, the answer is strangely. Right now, we think we can do more good here. It is heartening to have all present. Indeed. We will be glad of the additional hands should matters escalate. Our quarry is come. Huh. It seems I've lost this particular race. Although I suppose it's only fair. When we first met, it was I who outpaced you. Ravana, was it? You seem to know your trivia. But where are my manners? I wouldn't be here were it not for you, and I have yet to say a word of thanks. Hmm. Well, come on then. Arm giving you trouble? You should have it examined. You're not Artbert. Indeed, Artbert. Very well. Let us forego this pretense. After all, it was never you that I needed to deceive. Yes, it is I, Elizabeth. Through your time in Emmet Selk's imitation of our home, I dare say you have gained a better understanding of my role since last we met. Not that it matters. We understand your role, Emissary, but not your goal. What is it that you seek to achieve? I seek to enact the will of the Convocation, of course. If it helps you to think of me as but another Asian, no different in nature or purpose from the rest, you are welcome to do so. Once, I would have said your goal was destruction alone. Now I understand that you fight for something you love, just as we do. Yet though we seem doomed to clash, I bid you consider Emmet Selk's final words. Remember that we once lived, he said. 
Had he not seen some glimmer of hope in our kind, I do not believe he would have spoken thus. None better understood your plight than he. His words must surely be worthy of your consideration. Bemet Selk. How very unlike you to err so gravely. That one should stray at the end of so onerous a path is understandable. But I had thought you above such weakness. Mayhap you thought the same. Would that I had been present to offer correction. Damn. And here we see the arrogance of the Asians come up once again. We saw it a lot with Emmett, but like, he, d he firmly believes that no Asian could be convinced their mind changed, and he merely made a mistake. Because why would an Asian ever consider to leave the world to these puny mortals? But I shall do so now, as is my duty, and return all to its proper course. As for you, look at yourselves. Look at your history. Look back 100 short years to how your greatest warriors were undone. And now, at but a word from me, you raise your hands in answer like the puppets you are. Naught has changed. You fail and you fail and you learn nothing. Allow that which is most important to slip through your fumbling fingers like so many grains of sand, again and again and again, and you would remember us. You do forget yourselves. There is no common ground to be found between you and I. I have my duty. Brayman, congratulations. Or Bramimon. Also, I really like the scions here that now that we know what the Asians were trying to do, we're actually trying to willingly, on our own accord, trying to make peace with them. Something well, I don't think any of the scions would have believed had you told them back in ARR. It's safe to say his objective is the rejoining. Like, we want to make peace with the Asians. What a crazy 180 after so many expansions. But we still have no idea how playing the part of a warrior of light will further his cause, nor why he would spur others to do the same. Another visit to the Tempest may shed some light upon these mysteries. All right. Whether we are to exchange words or blows with Elidibus at our next meeting, the fact remains, we know too little. Ere our paths cross again, I would learn more of the world that once was, and of Elidibus himself. In <coughs> this, we would be best served going directly to his home, much as Emmett Selk came to ours. Though I see the wisdom in thy suggestion, the Amorot we visited is but a phantom born of Emmett Selk's memory. I fear it will teach us little that we do not already know. I don't know, Amorot's pretty big. I quite agree. Yet the ruins of the actual city remain unexplored. Did we sc ever scrub Bismarck's teeth? I think Oriange did in the meantime, off screen. Given the but I'd be fine with a teeth scrubbing minigame. I should not be surprised were there more such structures like to those in which the Ondo reside. Hmm. <laughs> As long as you don't make me do any other chores. Keep that up and I'll send you to bed without supper. Wife, 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 wife,
Assuming we are all in agreement, then I suggest we first pay a visit to the Ondo. If anyone can tell us where more ruins are to be found, it is them. Alphano <laughs> looked dumbfounded, yeah. Hold on, it is smoldering hot in here, and I think my AC is out of battery. I'm gonna go fix that real quick. my thermostat to turn on the AC automatically if the house goes above a certain uh, temperature. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. But it wasn't going off, so it got incredibly hot in here. Always with the raining. Finally got into FF and went to Limsa Ether to transfer world to a quieter world. But now I'm stuck. The transfer is not happening and I can't leave the zone. Now I'm trapped in Limsa. Oh no! I have sent for no finless ones. Perhaps you instead come seeking something of us. Ruins which your kind have yet to explore, I see. I know of one such place, alas, under these circumstances, I am afraid we can spare none to guide you there. And what circumstances are these? Rather than hunt our own meals, the Benthos have pillaged our stores and uh, Maniri liver. They must be replenished with our, okay, chores. All right, side quest. Bottom feeders, yep. Uh, ooh, one good turn and all that. I know, I know, Frey is screaming in my brain right now. Be grateful beyond words if you did. All right. Oh, geez. Hey, cave rave. This is where, whenever a uh, a hunt train ends in the cave, we have a cave rave. Well, I do. Everybody else just leaves, but. Call it the cave rave. Oh, here's one thing I really like about the Tempest. When you first get here, Amarot is obscured by depth, like really thick depth of field and fog and blur. 
But once you unlock it, you can see it in the distance all the time now. Off now. Yeah, it seems a lot of people's queues are broken. Those them. Yep. Perhaps you've deduced this already, but it seems the Benthos have been raiding Calusian storehouses as well as those of Leondo. Oranges, pumpkins, wheat. We can discuss this after we see the livers back safely to Tolsh Arf. It would seem uh, it wouldn't do to keep him in suspense. Why are they plundering Calusia? Hmm. They have no quarrel with Yondo. Do they? Calories. <laughs> oh, hey, Minori's here. You were in queue last time I saw you. Or heard from you, rather. Apologies, if you are whispering me, I can't see them. I've disabled tells so as to not get any ma malevolent tellers spoiling Endwalker. Can't be too careful. I'm relieved to see you unspare, unspeared. Bolting sack, uh, truly heinous squelching noises as you heft it over your shoulder. Ugh. Our precious livers, I know you would not fail. We also found all manner of foodstuffs from Calusia in the flounder's floor. Tell me, Tosh Af, does that not seem odd to you? It is brazen, to be sure. It reminds me of rumors I've heard recently concerning a rash of thefts from Calusian warehouses. The perpetrators enter in the dead of night and are gone beyond anyone has, uh, before anyone has realized what has happened. The Ulmoran army has been investigating, but thus far to no avail. Perhaps the reason they have struggled so is that their quarry is of the sea. The true question, then, is what we mean to do about it. Much as I would like to proceed to the ruins without further delay, we cannot allow the building there. If I may, I believe that the ruins are, in fact, key to the Benthos's plans. Is that so? These ruins, which lie deep within the illuminated land, are a recent discovery. We have seen signs that the Benthos are preparing to claim them with all haste. We cannot fathom why, but in light of the knowledge that they have been stockpiling resources, It is clear that their queen will soon give birth. They require space to raise their young and food for both queen and hatchlings to thrive. Well, we can hardly fault them for that. Under normal circumstances, perhaps, but conditions in the Tempest are far from suitable for spawning. If resources barely able to sustain our current population, there is only one reason they would disregard this. 
They seek to build an army, and with it take revenge upon the Finless. It is not a surprise. They came to us not long ago, seeking allies for the cause. We rebuff them, of course. The suffering of others would not serve as balm to their own. Their queen, however, desires only bloodshed and will gladly send her children to die in our stead. This is all kind of our fault, <laughs> let's be real. Can Bismarck's breath go away at some point? If they are planning to wage war, that changes matters considerably. Indeed. I doubt that this can be resolved without violence, but perhaps with a show of force we can convince them to see reason before the die is cast. I would rather not risk your people in the attempt. If we travel to the illuminated land, is there a way we might identify the ruins ourselves? Yes. Once you reach its depths, go deeper still. You will see a monstrous structure there upon the sea floor. That you have come to us now is the will of the Ancient Ones. They have guided you here that you may drive out the usurpers, those who seek to use their magnificent creations with vile purpose. I have no doubt that they will show you the way forward. I'm afraid that deed is, uh, that the deed, the dead do not speak so clearly. Nevertheless, we shall try not to disappoint. And considering it's Bismarck's breath, this place must stink. Ugh, I don't want to think what Fay Whale has been eating all this time. If what we seek lieth deeper still beyond Amarot, I would call upon the assistance of another. Another? Crystal XR? Hmm. Though our course hath been decided to pursue it would but we must needs beseech the aid of a friend. Aye, I speak of Bismarck. Oh, so we have to open up a different segment. <laughs> All right, Bismarck, we need you to breathe on a different segment of the Tempest now. Urian J made sure Bismarck's breath is minty fresh. Yeah, but that was afterwards. This first breath was before we gave him his little brushing. I'm stuck at 1k Q, I will pray for you. Hopefully your PC doesn't become a primal. All right, minty fresh Bismarck. Let's see. Ding, 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 da, ding, ding. Ling, ding, ding, ding. 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 Wait, does that mean... Does that mean, um... What's it called? Isn't there another, like... Jazzy... Dungeon? Because there's a dungeon coming up. But aren't there two jazz jazzy dungeons in Shadowbringers? A side one? Yeah, what's the side one? Oh, there's two Aniders. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Academia Aniter and Anamnesist Aniter. That one's optional, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, because I was looking at the MSQ and I was like, wait a minute. Yeah. That's right. Can never have enough jazz. Would Google, Google Library be considered jazz? I guess so, yeah. From here, we press onward to the Isle of Ken. I myself, myself shall proceed on foot. You've perfected your technique, then? Just so. 
The water will be as glass beneath my feet, and provideth purchase fragile yet true. Watch closely. Oh, I certainly will. <laughs> Forgive me, but would it not be easier for, to perfect your swimming technique? Aye, it would be a pity if you drown, truly. <laughs> oh, hush, I'm sure it'll be brilliant. The deadpan. Oh my god! He's done it! <laughs> Prithee observeth as I shall flexeth upon thou. Orion J. Jesus. That's a long walk. Oh. <laughs> like a rock. Oh, for the love of... Mine apologies. <laughs> the technique requires the purest of focus and... <clears throat> Mine was, twas lacking. To perfect this magic, I went so far as to deal with the Fwath, and with their aid, mine efforts finally met with success, albeit on a single occasion. I know not why I cannot repeat it. I thought I saw your, your, uh, you waver a bit towards the end there. Perhaps you're simply tired. Oh, wait, no, oh, no. Thancred. It's nothing to worry about, only a dizzy spell. Though it may not be wise to go for another swim just now. So it wasn't Orianje's fault. He totally could have done it. Thankfully, we have an alternative. A wonderful little invention. I am certain you'll agree. It's called a boat. <laughs> Jeez. If his walking on water worked anything like it does in Naruto, would Orianje not struggle if he... If it were a master dragoon, what if he taught Astinian? Astinian! Ooh! Jesus dragoon. I will petition Bismarck's aid on our behalf. Let us pray my diplomacy proveth more effective than mine experimental magics. Did somebody say Astinian? <laughs> You speaketh with the voice of the king, little neighbors. I will not deny you. As before, if you seek what sleeps beneath the sea, I will be your guide. Ah, shit. How does Faye sound? Iklana kushna bahudi sih me. Before we depart, however, I would ask a favor. I have an itch on the bottom of my underside. Pray, take a piece of rough coral. Wait, he's actually itchy. Wait, wait a minute. I was making a bit. He is itchy. Remove them and I will take you below. With all haste shall it be done. I was doing a bit, and then I read the whole thing. He actually does need a little bit of a scratch. So, did he agree? 
I, though I agree to a favor in kind. Regrettably, tis not one I possess the power to grant. His mark hath asked us to clean his underbelly of barnacles. <laughs> Alas, one must needs dive deep uh, beneath the surface to do so. Even if I could master the power to walk upon it, it would avail me naught. Oh, for heaven's sake, is that all? Victor and I are most, more than capable of that. When the Cogent's blessing, we'll have done it with, uh, with, uh, done with it in moments. And better than standing here and listening to this nonsense, I'll take the right, you take the left. Now go. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Okay. What's got her up in a tizzy? I'm in your debt. Who unbalanced her mana? All right, and Geronimo! That didn't work. Geronimo! That didn't work either. Geronimo! What the hell is that noise? <gasps> zoomy, zoomy! Thank you for the raid. Welcome, everybody. Hi, Zoomy, zoomy. Welcome. Wooga booga. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Pardon the follower-only chat. I am currently in uh, doing Shadowbringers and with Endwalker over the horizon. I have set it to follower-only for at least a day so as to avoid spoilers. That said, I am in the post-quests of Shadowbringers. And uh, so if you have not made it this far, this is major spoiler territory. So, uh, oh, is that Max? Max? Hello, Max. Welcome. I'm about to go do some jazz. Freeform jazz. Is that Max Poetic? Thine efforts are most sincerely appreciated. I will inform Bismarck that we have scratched his belly. Me and Zoomers were leveling Reaper? Nice. That's the spot. Thank you, little neighbors. I remember a long time ago, another did this favor for me. After the flood, when I chose this spot for my slumber, he came and made a home on my back. Ken was his name. When I grew itchy, I stirred, but he was not afraid. No, he asked me what was wrong. I told him of the creatures clinging to my belly, and he drove, he dove into the water. He helped me. He was my friend. He told me he wished to live in peace, away from his people and their wars. This I understood. I treasured our time together, brief though it was, brief though it always is, but I remember him, and how he laughed when we flew. I remember when he slept, I too slept that day, and many days since. But the light fades and darkness returns, Ken sleeps. But in memory he laughs, and together we fly. And I am here, I am awake. Hmm, it feels good to speak and to be heard again. A shame others cannot understand me. If thou art willing to learn, I would gladly teach thee the language of man. Thank you, little friend, but it is time I grant you your request. But first, I will take flight to cleanse my body and prepare. The dive will be swift, and I would not have you struck by errant debris.
So this island was named for a man. How easily the past is forgotten. Oh, Thancred knows Faye. He passed not even 100 years ago, yet the truth has slipped from history like so many grains of sand. Might I have some explanation as to what he just said, or shall we all stand about making vague and mysterious illusions? Well, he, he gave Rin a Fey name. Well, I, I thought he just knew Fey like, you know, like weebs know Japanese, you know? <laughs> Not actually know Fey. While he maketh ready to deliver us unto the, our destination, Bismarck bade us wait for him on the shore of Calusia. That's all. I feel as though there was more to it. Indeed there was, but it hath no bearing on the task at hand. I should be glad to share the rest of you anon. <laughs> that is what you asked for, Alizé. <laughs> oh. Oh no, the consequences of my own actions. If Bismarck requires time to prepare, might I suggest a short re respite? For Uriange and Thancred in particular. I require no such thing. I am the picture of perfect health. Mine was but a momentary lapse in concentration. Worry not on my account. You mustn't push yourself so. Please rest for me. Oh! The puppy dog eyes. All right, all right. If you insist. You too, Victor. You've been running yourself ragged. Uh, yes, ma'am. In that case, I will leave the old men in your care. <laughs> the rest of us will meet you at Split Hull Anon. Word of advice, never let it show. When she realizes she struck a nerve, she remembers. By the God, she remembers. In any case, if we must be ready, uh, made to rest, I know a place in Sullen that's better uh, for it than most. Come with me. Senile dudes. Oh man, I'm not that old. Am I, Chad? I, I mean, I know my hair is gray and all, but like, it's not showing, is it? May as well have a seat. We wouldn't want our elderly knees to give out. I'm still spry. To hear her speak. You think I'm on my deathbed. By the twelve, I wish that girl wouldn't worry so much. Thy countenance believeth, uh, belies thy words, Master Thancred. <laughs> he called you old. <laughs> I'm sure I don't know what you <laughs> don't know what you mean. Let the record show that I'm here under protest. Though I cannot say I mind the view. I can't believe that scathing comment Ariane just made, Jesus. And if the abundance of anglers on any indication, even an amateur might land an impressive catch. Shall we try our hand? Oh my God, he's fishing. You really are getting old. Help, someone quickly. It's Nightshade. Uh, he, we was attacked on the road f to the, from the Crystarium. Barely escaped with me life. I suppose we might have predicted this. All right, here's a chance for us to uh, show that we're not that old. Nope. Oh. You mean you'll help for free? Uh, thank you. If I recall correctly, Nightshade is a local band of outlaws. I doubt they'll trouble us over much. No more than they already have by interrupting our relaxation, at any rate. I'll get my walker. 
<laughs> Don't throw out your back with that big sword, Granddad. <sighs> Damn kids. Just wait till I get back to the source. You two have matters in hand by the looks of it. I'll not forget this kindness. May we meet again? Hey, it's this guy. It's those two. Is that you, sir? Don't tell me we just deprived that poor fellow the honor of being rescued by the Warrior of Darkness. We had no idea you were in the area. Fancy us meeting again so soon, eh? Why, I believe I even recognize your companion. <laughs> ah, yes, from the infirmary. You had a message from uh, for the Crystal Exarch, did you not? It's good to see you back on your feet. And on patrol, no less. I like that eyeball cock from Thancred. It's like, what are you saying, I'm not famous? <laughs> Oh, it's n nothing as official as all that. Uh, strictly speaking, we're off duty, but we all, uh, we had a free moment. We thought we'd give a few of the less traveled roads a uh, look. The guards don't have, uh, the guard doesn't have enough hands to patrol them regularly, you see. That's admirable. There are few so devoted to their duty in Lakeland or beyond. You escaped Limsa, congratulations. Well, we'll be talking about it for a while, and neither of us is satisfied with just seeing out our service. It feels like we could be doing more. Like we should be doing more. It's all about having the will to help your fellow man, and resolve to see it through. Hmm. I remember you, the excitable one. Sorry, sir. I got a bit overexcited the other day. It couldn't get me words out. Name's Von uh, Vonard, sir. I'm with the guard, and I don't just want to protect Lakeland. I want to protect the lot, just like the Warriors of Light. Oh, hmm. Sadly, our duties prevent us from venturing too far with our own little corner of Norvrand. What we'd really like to do is travel, to better ourselves and go where the need is greatest. But everyone has to start somewhere, don't they? For now, if we can stop Nightshade from robbing the odd fishermen, then that's all we'll do. You know... Though his, um, intentions might not be great, Elidibus has caused a bit of good. Inadvertently. <laughs> Just seeing where it leads is, is the scary part. Well, well, future heroes are the first, you think? They want not for spirit. Tis but a pity they draw inspiration from so clouded a wellspring. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Yet it availeth us not to fret in idleness. We must needs press on if we are to bring Elidibus' schemes to light. Road to heck is paved with good intentions. Th that's the thing, though, is Elidibus doesn't have good intentions. It's his actions that are inadvertently causing good to happen. For how long? Who knows? That has always been the way of the Asians. is like... Just like... So much of what they're doing is, like, harmless. But it must lead to something, right? Just like how Emmett was like, Go slay the Light Wardens. And it's like... Okay, what I, I was going to before, but now you're telling me, so why, you know? Why? Why are you not stopping me from slaying the Light Wardens?
Ooh, is that Bismarck in the distance? No, this is a random island. All are present. Now we need but wait for Bismarck's coming. Tis time. Pray make ready. Isn't he going to cause a tsunami? Should we get our floaties? There we go. All right. Zeke. Actually, I'm going to do a party finder and uh, just so that other people have a chance to play with. That's all right. <laughs> 